What is up, YouTube? My Cowboys family here, bringing you guys the latest update on our very own Dallas Cowboys, and of course, as always, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Take a second, hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow us on all social media at My Cowboys Family, and of course, hop in the Discord link for that's in the description box down below. Welcome back, guys. A big long day of uh, a lot of quotes from our front office and our coach. Yes, Jerry Jones, yeah, Mike no McCarthy. More mystery secrets. They let it all out there, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, kind of what we literally said yesterday right here in my Cowboys family is what they confirmed today. They, a lot of these questions we had fully confirmed. The all-in has been all out. We know that already. Yesterday was, uh, you know, you know, basically with less, you're going to win. That's the, you know, we're going to do better yes. with less. And that is exactly what the Cowboys plan is. We'll get into that and more tonight going forward into this 2024 season. But first, let's go into this week where we have a couple of ballers representing our boards. Much love to McLovin. Yes, Whoa. he's a Dolphin fan, but he's an MCFer here in MC of My Cowboys Family. He's the sponsor of the week, reclaiming his titles again. Not just the sponsor of the week, but also the Cash App King. Cash App King, I know he's had that for six out of the last, for six out of the last seven weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Or, yeah, I think six of the last seven weeks and four out of the last six weeks he's had that sponsor of the week. So domination from the man McLovin. Can't Thank do you this. so much yes. for showing the love. Yeah, especially after dark. He dropped it a couple times here, but he's after dark in it. Much love to McLovin and also much love to the all-time record holder when it comes to the longevity streak on our membership side of things. The Silver Level member, A. Lavelle with 87 Jake Ferguson points Ooh. on the stream, boss. Appreciate him. And... The man always staying skeptical is our gifting champion. Our membership gifting champion with three last week, which is enough to give him the victory. So he's back at the top there. He's also currently at the top of the list this week with one dropped membership, one gifted membership. So appreciate skeptical fan. He's trying to go back to back as he's the only one on the board and in the lead. He's trying to go back to back like our 90s Cowboys. And we'll see if McLovin goes back to back again. You know, he did it. Back to back to back to back multiple times last, you know, the last, uh, what, month and a half or so. Yes, he did. But McLovin, uh, you know, on the cash app side, currently is in second place. Even though he dropped some love yesterday after dark, so did Marissa Sparkle, star level member, dropping a little bit after dark. And another little bit from Mr. Scone, 971 after dark. So all the after dark fun is already added and uh, accumulated on the screen. Accounted uh, for. Yes. But McLovin in second place on both boards is a reason why. Because the man who's currently leading both of these boards, the overall going for that sponsor of the week board and the Cash App King board is none other than Harley Dad. Much love to the man Harley Dad on the After Dark sessions going going crazy, dropping the love and truly appreciate, you know, his his uh you know his enjoyment of our after dark streams and also he's a Niner fan, but he respects the MCF family here. So appreciate you, Harley Dad, as he's currently Trying to reclaim his first ever Cash App crown and sponsor of the week, cha you know, champion there. So that's, you know, rarely been done by fans of other teams, although I got to say McLovin is one of them. So thank you all. Appreciate everybody. Harley Dad, uh, McLovin, A. Lavelle. We got, of course, a Skeptical Fan in the, on the gifting side of things. Everybody who's dropped a love this week, whether after dark or here, thank you. And, you know, we usually skip a Tuesday stream, but we're here. We're back because this is a, a big day of news, info, and updates. But first, let me explain to you how you guys can drop some love. Like you see these other names up here, whether it's in the Super Chat, which you guys know how to do. Super Chats, there's the Thanks button. There's also Gifting Memberships, which is always, uh, you know, one of the better ways of, of dropping the love here. For two, you know, two for one, two birds, one stone, right? You're helping a family member get a membership for a month. And That's right. you're dropping some love for the channel, getting on the board. Speaking of on the board in the Super Chat, it's the Q-Man. Justin Quarles. Thank much you so much, Justin. Love. Showing the love, Ooh. representing. You know what he had to one say. Of, I know he's one of the OGs. What did Justin have to say? The human. Fifteen dollars to MCF and four ninety nine to Jerry's All In Fun. <laughs> well, gonna, hey, I have great start news for you, Justin. That, right? that five dollars is going to go so far. You have no yeah. idea how many players we can get. Yeah, we're going to get a spike for Brandon Aubrey's it's cleats. Jerry special. Sorry, get, the Jones special. It's going to be one spike for Brandon Aubrey's cleat. Is what we're getting with that. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Justin Quarles, the Q-Man. Yes, representing no longer a Tony Pollard holler. Who is yes. it again? It is Redrick 
Sheldrick Redwine. I am never going to remember Sheldrick that. Sheldrick Redwine is number 20. So he's repping that number too well right now. A red wine, $20 holla. It just don't sound right. Perfect way to kick things off here because, yes, that is pretty much, you know, the, the short way to discuss the very detailed discussions of tonight as we hear from all of our coaches exactly what we are and are not doing. <laughs> coaches, front office, yeah. pretty much everybody. The things we're not doing and just going to go, the things we aren't doing and the things we are going to do in this season, which is not much. But let me continue this here. Much love to Mr. Justin Quarles, who's fifth on the overall board. As you can see, a super chat. There's a thanks button. Any video that posts, any video that, that is uploaded or whatever it may be or goes live and it's over, you can drop a thanks love through there. You could jump and join into the membership. Like I think Seabass is about to turn the corner on that tonight here in the over everything. We'll see what happens. And then you can gift memberships, as we said. But there's four other ways where you could attack the McLovin Cash App, Harley Dad's lead, up in that Cash App crown. How is that? How does that get down, baby? Of course, guys, you have the Cash App money sign, My Cowboys Family, the Venmo at My Dash Cowboys Dash Family, the regular PayPal link, and last but not least, the Streamlabs link lets your comment show up on screen just like a super Hell chat. Yeah. But by the way, Justin Quarles, appreciate you. We're going to talk about Jerry's, um, <laughs> you know, win with less fund. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> win with less. Not all in the, the win with less fund. So, again, and by the way, that drop takes Mr. Lavelle. To 67 points. He, right. he was deep in that green. And now he's teetering. Teetering. <laughs> so, again, appreciate you, Justin Crawls, the Q-Man, and everybody. I see I see real shit in the house because I got to, you know, the few news, the few things we talk about when it comes to NFL teams, the Steelers seem to be involved in something every day. So, yeah, he you know he's waiting for his portion of the Steeler news, you know, in the early part of the stream, which is coming. It's coming. Now, uh, I do want to also say uh, you saw the four ways of dropping the love there. Uh, yes. Outside of the basic, you know, known ways through the YouTube side. But... There's, you know, there's, there's a, there's a raffle going down here in, a, in the next, you know, end of this week, beginning of next week, and it's that starred over everything level membership monthly jersey raffle sewn and stitched. I mean, we got cowboy players like forty different ones, old and new, different styles, sizes, the whole thing. But there's also because they do have some new, we're gonna have some new players this mm -hmm. week in this raffle. There's basically a, a player, less players than the Cowboys, you know, that you get available, but you have basically a lot of players available from every NFL team and even the four major sports so you can pick anything you want uh, but yes we've only given away cowboy jerseys so far star level you will all be in it the over everything level if he's still in it see bath he'll be in this thing and then the weekly winners will also be in it so for example mclovin james Bra you know uh, jeremy bramlett mm -hmm. uh we had dead fool those they, they three out of the four spots are taken harley dad's trying to go for number four there we'll see what happens when trying to get some of these uh you know weekly winners into this this you know once a month raffles but going back to the star and over everything level there's of course navy blue and that silver too on fridays we shout out the silver crew but every night we shout out the star and over everything level so baby uh why don't you shout out the top shelf elite memberships of course thank you very much to skeptical fan jason renfro lincoln kane mary alvarez marissa sparkle andy potched Dwayne broussard the lunatic and over everything mm. Seabass. Seabass in the house. Woo. Appreciate you, bro. And everybody else in the in those levels and everybody in all the memberships. Now, as we go forward with this here, we're going to talk <laughs> talk some NFL football and talk, of course, a lot of Cowboy football. There's a couple moves maybe happening, right? Stephon Gilmore. What about the running back in free agency? <laughs> and then we also have uh, the Cowboys plan straight out of their fucking mouths. Mm -hmm. All right. And McCarthy's got to say what the Joneses tell him to say. You know, we heard from Jerry and Steven yesterday. Jerry can't help himself. He had to speak again today from Orlando, from the owners, from the uh, NFL meeting. And then McCarthy also, well, part of the coaching crew there, also got interviewed today. A lot of info we got to discuss. Yeah, a lot of new injuries <laughs> came out of the blue from our rookies. They got to step up now. It's yeah, year what two. A, what a surprise. What else huh? is going to happen? What else can go wrong? Wow, what an all-in. Anyways, we'll get into this and more here in a minute. But baby, first... I got to shout out the crew in the house. Who's, yes, in, who's here live with us to talk some cowboy news info and updates? Thank you to Tyrone Church. What's up? Even you, Lee Side uh, Harold. He just loves good football cowboy talk. That's what mm -hmm. he loves. Rolando Rodriguez, much love. Brandon J, hello and hi. The man himself, C. Bass, yeah. representing. We're going to be hearing from him. Very, yeah, later very in the week. Soon, right? Yeah, probably again when around when we do that that raffle for the for the month of March here in the next what couple days, four or five days. Yeah. So, let's see. We have, of course, Justin Quarles, a Q man. Q man. Real shit. Four one two also came to listen to <laughs> some real football. Yep. 
12th man off the grid alaska shout out to you blueberry wine much love uh again i don't know about uh drafting a quarterback by color you know uh, but at this point i don't know what the jones's qualifications are for picking their quarterbacks or any other player so huh. bet my fan much love we have who else what's texas cowboy Dallas cowboy for life Thomas Garrett, the superior. Garrett. You know it. Raul in the house. Mike Aldana, much love. Dustin Roberts, shout out to you. Daniel Berry Sports Highlights, what's up? Griff181, peace to you as well. Juan Carlos representing, dropping those emojis. Texas Twister, stay safe out there on the road. No, oh, we got Jared Jones himself <laughs> in the chat. He spoke Ooh. and he's in our chat. McLovin said, yeah. <laughs> Have a great stream. McLovin in the house, yes. Freedom first, Chia. I think he was first. Good for you, man. So I think that's almost everyone here. So yeah, as people kind of roll in, I'll make sure to give them their proper due and proper shout outs as they roll in here. But baby, you know what? Why don't you talk Cowboys too? Yeah, talk well, NFL too. Well, well, actually, this one is, this is actually Cowboys and NFL because it's one of our guys that might not be here next year uh, or this year, I should say. So I'm actually starting with free agency and some moves that were made out there. And I'm going to start off with a move that was not made yet. But it's very popular. This just broke about an hour ago. So some of you guys may be behind on this. And it's not going to affect the Cowboys in the sense that we're getting anybody. It's more about a guy we can't get anymore. And it's coming closer and closer. He's gone. And who, I'm, who am I talking about? Our starting cornerback from last year, Stephon Gilmore. Now, the Panthers, the Carolina Panthers, today, literally an hour ago, announced that they are interested in the reunion with the Cowboy free agent cornerback Stephon Gilmore, uh, again the 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 way it's sounding is that he's he could be could tomorrow we'll probably know more if it happens you know you heard it here first, but tomorrow is a good chance that he might be signing some kind of deal making an announcement to get back to his hometown team here in this free agency period. Now of course still you know rep- <laughs> that Zeke number Zeke's still a free agent but. Gilmore is Cowboys cornerback last year and still remains unsigned through two weeks of free agency. I heard the Cowboys kind of say they kind of wanted him, but then they said also kind of, hey, we got our three guys here. So it sounds like they don't want to spend 07, 8, or $10 million for Stephon Gilmore. And now we're two weeks in. The Cowboys obviously are basically saying, we're not interested in you. So what is he going to do? Sit around and hope, wanting to play for this team, or he's going to go out and, and find a place to play? So he's obviously going elsewhere. Yeah, it's a matter on the wall. Yeah. So now we know the Panthers are interested. He may be coming back to his hometown. And so, again, a new suitor, as in the Carolina Panthers, has just emerged an hour ago. This is according to Joe Joe Pearson of The Athletic. The Panthers have reached out to Stephon Gilmore to discuss a possible reunion. Now, again, remember, Stephon Gilmore ain't no young chick, you know, no young guy. Spring chicken. Yeah, he is 33 years old. He's not the same player he was when he was with the Patriots and winning the Defensive Player of the Year in 2019. But obviously, as we know, with being with the Cowboys, he is a very solid option in our secondary and as a cornerback, an outside cornerback, not a slot, but an outside quarterback. Cornerback, again, and probably in his only season with the Cowboys last year, veteran cornerback Stephon Gilmore started all 17 games, even with some injury issues, still battled through that, recorded 68 total tackles, had 13 passes defended, and two interceptions. One was a game-ender. One was an easy one, the Giants week one. Another yeah. one was a game-ender against the Chargers in week six, I think it was. Anyways, point is, it looks like Stephon Gilmore may be bye-bye for the Cowboys. And that, obviously, is something yeah, that, you know, pretty likely. we kind of assume that, but now that the reality is here and the fact that the Cowboys are just going to let them go like that, probably on a cheap deal is going to end up happening. It's another. It's going to be a question when you see when and if Jordan Lewis gets one of his injuries. You know, Diggs, you know, with the ACL, you don't know. And then you got, of course, uh, uh, Deron Bland. If any of these guys go down, we got Nashawn Wright stepping up. We're in trouble. All right? That's why we needed four, not three. And Jordan Lewis, I don't know if he's like, you know, he's a, he's a good slot guy. It may be a top 10 slot, you know, nickel corner, but... Deron Bland is actually better than him at the at the slot, so I wouldn't have a I, I would love to have a great one. What is he like like a million like one point five million for for Jordan Lewis? That's who we're pointing as a starter. When you could get a, you know you can move Deron Bland to his it kind of like Tyron Tyler Smith, elite at guard. When you move the you move him to tackle, he's excellent. Uh, Deron Bland is excellent in the slot as a nickel corner, but he is uh, I'm sorry he is elite he's a, a, a very good a, a excellent as an outside cornerback Deron Bland. But when you move him 
to the nickel cornerback spot, he's elite. And you can't do that if Jordan Lewis is your is your guy. He, Jordan Lewis cannot play on the outside. So Jordan Lewis is automatically the nickel corner, which automatically pushes De'Ron Bland out to the outside. So you see how it's hurting us in two ways, whether it's placement and getting the most out of our cornerbacks or depth. Both these things here are hurting. And also you can throw in there, why not veteran leadership? Because Jordan Lewis is probably the oldest cornerback we got on our team. Uh, Stephen Gilmore was is a guy who's been the Pro Bowl Defensive Player of the Year. A lot a lot higher in excellence when it comes to their comparison and you know their careers. So it's we're losing a lot with not being able to re-sign someone like Gilmore. There are a couple guys still around that give you similar things. It's just a new player, you know, with players. You know, Gilmore knows our guys, knows a lot of the defense. So, you know, it would have been a better, I think, smoother mix and, and a fit. Cowboys are not interested. The front office don't give a shit. Just being honest. So, huh, any thoughts on that from the chat since we just kind of started this or from you, baby? Any thoughts? I mean, I we have to admit, I, what, I'm not surprised, but I am still disappointed. Like, I'm, I'm surprised I'm disappointed even. But, you know, did we get any numbers or any kind of estimation on what Gilmore might be going for? Maybe he's not signed yet. So No, no, no. I'm just saying. Like, the, I'm no, just saying, no, no. Like, Sp- like- Sport track had him at like 11 million. But I don't think he's going to get that much. I agree. At this point, two weeks into the into the. I mean, look, if the Cowboys weren't interested in bringing back Hankins for two million, why yeah. would they go back for Gilmore when they seem pretty intent on moving on from basically every mm-hmm. single free agent? Like I said, I am disappointed <laughs> like for pretty much every single reason that you yeah. just stated. I'm not going to repeat them, but agreed. Yeah. And you know, you guys here in the chat agree as well. See, by saying not Gilly Joneses, what are y'all doing? Hmm. You know. Losing this amount of players absolutely feels like, I don't care what the Jones will say, it feels like a rebuild. Yep. Right? So, Tyrone Church said, Izzy is good at corner, but agree. Right? Israel Mukwan, you just can't throw him in there and say he's going to take over. He's barely played at all. It's corner now, or, or Justin Robert did say, not really. He was an all-pro as an outside corner. Who was? Uh, I'm not sure who you're talking about specifically. You're talking about Deron Bland? Possibly. He was a, the reason. Listen, guys. The reason he was a Pro Bowler was because he had five interceptions and an All Pro. I mean, or six pick. You know, whatever. Five pick sixes. I mean, that is the. Only, I'm, not, I'm just gonna be honest here. It wasn't necessarily because he was so great as an outside cornerback. He is still excellent as an outside corner. Yeah. He is a lockdown. He don't. He maybe don't get picks as much as a, as a as a nickel corner because he completely takes him out the mix and other guys get the picks. So I'd rather have the the the. Elite play from Jordan Lewis in the in the in the uh, in the nickel cornerback slot coverage spot, and then you can have Diggs and someone like Gilmore on the other side. That is your best three by far, by far. But Bland is still very good on the outside, excellent on the outside, and Jordan Lewis is very good in the nickel. And the Cowboys are going to go very cheap, so this is the best you're going to get with the cheap Joneses. And we're going to lose a guy that's probably going to go for seven or eight million dollars. We can afford that. Cowboys say they don't care. They're basically rebuilding. The Cowboys at this point, and, and you'll see what when you hear what they say. This is rebuilding 101, rebuilding 101 with just a, a team that has talent. If it looks like a duck <laughs> and it quacks like a duck, mm. it's probably a duck. Probably a motherfucking duck. And uh, let me tell you, the Cowboys are definitely quack quacking yeah, right they're now. Ducking around. So, so no, <laughs> yeah, the Chief Joneses. I have to agree with you there, right? Let me see. Uh, see if I said Blands, Diggs, Gilmore. We never got to see it. Yeah, yeah. and we never will. Two games. Two games of that. Will. That's all we got to see is two games of the best that we had out there. And they played lockdown. And then as soon as we had to move, De'Ron Blaine had some trouble in that Arizona game. But he was back on track, obviously. He was picks and all that stuff. But he still had gotten burned. Remember that, guys. Even that pick six against Washington when he broke the record. Uh, he still was allowing like 100 yards on him. You know, from the outside. So you got to put that in perspective, too. Yes, he'll get those picks. He'll get those pick sixes. It won't ever happen again. But I want him locking down, guys. Not allowing 100 yards and then getting a pick six. I want him locking down, guys. And I don't need a pick six if, we, if we're if we winning by 20 already. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. <laughs> Bama fans said the same old clown show year after year is getting old. And yeah. Jareth said, I don't know about you. I'd rather have $11 million in my pocket. It's not even your pocket, Jareth. Well, the thing is... When it comes to the pocket of uh, you know eleven million dollars, he ain't gonna he's not gonna be eleven million. And let's say he signed for seven, he's gonna hit the cap for four. I mean, people don't understand that it's gonna be you can move these deals down the road a little bit and put some voidable years for very little hits in the future. That you, I mean, there's like we talked about a guy who got a, a, a five year deal, a one year deal mm-hmm. with four voidable years. So basically, it's a million a million dollars for the next four years. That's dead money. 
and like a million this year. I mean, that's the way you do it. That's the smart way of doing it. Every year you get more money and you got your bills covered already. The Cowboys don't know how to do it. That's their problem. So yeah, you for can, as much as they pride themselves on managing their cap appropriately, again, we we never quite do, do we? I'm telling you, I'm throwing that out there. So burn. They do it their way. Burn in the house. They do it their way. So stubbornly with it. Yeah, they make a couple good moves, but ninety percent of it is either they get lucky or it's shit moves. That's usually what comes down with this front office. They back into undrafted guys like Romo. And, and, and now they think that, like, Brock Hoffman and, and T.J. Bash should be, you know, Hall of Famers probably. That's what Jerry's probably thinking. While you're looking at, you know, and Dak in the fourth round, we're getting guys falling in our laps, getting lucky, and we waste all the talent we get. All of it. All of it. Yeah, and we matter. also don't take advantage of yep. investing in their cheaper years, yep. right? The whole point of having cheap guys at big spots and big talent is, oh, shit, we don't have to pay them. We can afford to pay it's all almost, these other people. It's almost, yeah, it's almost like Stephen Jones, like – he wants to do the negotiation game, and then he loses every time. It's like, just get it done early, and you can beat the harder negotiations if you just give a little more a little earlier if you're, so, if you're sold on these guys. you got to be sold on some of these guys. You pride yourself on the draft as everything, so why aren't you? You know, It doesn't correlate. It's the bullshit of the Joneses, but in the end, I'm not surprised. I'm not, even, I'm not disappointed that I'm not even – I'm disappointed I'm, even, I'm not more upset about this when it comes to Gilmore. Because I'm just like, you know, it is exactly what the Cowboys, other than the all-in bullshit to hype us up after that Green Bay loss, it's been all, it's been all out there already. You read through the, between the lines, you read the tea leaves, you can see that these, this was probably what was going to happen. I don't know if we thought it was going to be this bad, but, but it is. As <laughs> Here the prophecy are. foretold. <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. There's, there's there's our there's one other guy from the Cowboys not gonna be a Cowboy in 2024 it looks like now cornerbacks I got two more cornerbacks to talk about former Bill, former Bills All Pro cornerback Tredavious White is intending to sign a one year eight and a half million dollar deal with a max value of up to ten million dollars with the Rams now again just as a comparison right Tredavious White who probably is uh, you know when he was not injured one of the better cornerbacks in the league probably better than Stephon Gilmore. And he's getting eight and a half million dollars. Now he's coming off the injury, so of course, yeah, there's some issue there. But max value of ten, you know, eight and a half million dollars. This, you know, I'm just saying, like, like that's you can see Gilmore being a little less than that in some cases, in my I opinion. Agree. Now the Titans, they made a trade to get Legarius Sneed, who was on a t- franchise tag from the from the Chiefs, and got a, and the Titans traded for him a good deal. But now they have to sign him for a long-term deal. This was the known thing when they got him on their team. They already got Chidobe Wuzi on one side, who's average. So now they got Legereus Sneed on the other side, formerly of the Chiefs, who, you know, is one of the top corners, right? He's getting paid as one of the highest cornerbacks uh, salary in the NFL right now. Legereus Sneed agreed to terms with the Tennessee Titans on a massive new contract. You know, now that his franchise-tagged Tennessee, you know, Titan... Uh, his franchise tag deal is done to the Tennessee Titans. He's getting a he's signing a four year, seventy six point four million dollar deal that includes fifty five million dollars of that portion guaranteed, and a twenty million dollars signing bonus. Again, guys, four years, seventy six million dollars. One of the highest paid cornerbacks in the NFL, Legereus Sneed. Uh, you know, I just talked about Tre'Davious White for eight and a half million. You know, where's Stephon Gilmore falling in this? Interesting. Anyways, moving on from cornerbacks, let's go to running backs. Because this guy now, officially, on my list, I have Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and Kareem Hunt and a couple other guys on my short list of free agent running backs. And we're going to have to discuss this because of Jones's, I mean, Jerry discusses it and McCarthy discusses the running back situation (laughs) for us in a lot of different ways. But it's not Ezekiel Elliott yet. It's J.K. Dobbins. This is a guy, uh, one of the highest guys on my list. Just the injury issues are my concern. Outside of that, he's fantastic. And he's still out there, of course, because today he won't be out there very long. He was officially cleared for football activities today. Oh. Dr. Neil L. Atrach wrote in a letter to, to select teams today, noting that Dobbins looks, quote, outstanding coming off his torn Achilles. So now, you know, Dobbins, he, when he played, he averages 5.8 yards per carry in his career. So he's already expected to take a lot of visits soon. If it's a lot of teams, the Cowboys will probably drop out of that because they're not getting in a bidding war with anyone for any running back. So J.K. Dobbins back on the, on, you know, now in a serious way out there. We'll see 
If the Cowboys are one of the teams interested in him, I would not hold my breath. The Cowboys are interested in a couple running backs. I'll get to them in a little bit. Or at least that's what the quote-unquote word is. Now let's get into the NFL news that really kind of, you know, is, is the rule change situation. It's all about John Fossil's kickoff rule. And I'm going to talk about that fo- uh, kickoff rule that did pass. I'm going to show you some visual here so you'll understand oh, how good. it's going to run. But there's a big, to me, it's a signing that was important today. And this is the Steelers. I don't know if real shit's still there. Oh, he is. He's been waiting. Uh, Atlanta Falcons All-Pro and Pro Bowl kickoff and punt returner Cordell Patterson. All right, he's a running back wide receiver combo. You know, I've talked about him as being a running back available that we can kind of grab out there, kind of a hybrid kind of guy, and a great returner, which we already have in Kevontae Turpin. But Cordell Patterson, one of the bigger named free agents still available for what he can do, is going to sign with Real Shit's team, the Pittsburgh Squealers. I mean, the Steelers. Hmm. He's going to get a two-year, $6 million deal. That's it. $3 million a year. Very reasonable. So, okay, $3 million a year for a running back, receiver, and kickoff punt returner. I mean, you're getting four jobs in one for $3 million a year. I'm sorry. I hate to say it, but the Steelers did another good deal here. The NFL has altered the kickoff rules, and that is why the Steelers went after him. The Steelers went after P- P- uh, Cordell P- uh, Patterson because of the, the, fo- the new kickoff rule now makes that returner so important. So much more important than just getting a guy who catches the ball on offense and just tries his best. Yeah, I think throughout the league you'll see teams investing a little bit more in a special teams type of player. A returner, yeah, Yeah. of some sort, yeah. Because now it's going to be – now you need your guys that kind of do the trick play stuff. That's what you want to do for kick. You want to get the best trick play kind of guy on returns. And Cordell Patterson is a a jack-of-all-trades. He can do that. Kevontae Turpin, as we know, can be receiver, running back, and return kicks and punts. So – we have some. We don't need Patterson, but the Steelers made a good deal in picking up somebody who is a viable offensive piece and also a fantastic kickoff returner. With the new kickoff rules, it makes a difference. I well, agree. I'll talk about Kevontae Turpin's thoughts about this in a minute, but let's talk about the fucking rule first, right? Let, and let me show you guys what it means. What does it mean when it comes to this new rule? And I want you to see it visually. I'll I'll, I'll go through the, the way it went down today. I'll break down the rule one more last time. I've done it all week. But I'm going to do it a little visual aid so you guys can maybe understand what I'm saying a little better. Because now it's a – I wanted to wait till it was officially a rule. Now that it's a rule, you guys got to know it. I got to know it. Maybe you got to know it. We all – okay. we're back in – we're in class now. School's in. <laughs> and – the new kickoff rule, is, as shows here, you see on the left side and the right side, okay? There's there's the location of the players on the left side. You see how they have to line up. On the right side, you're seeing the zones, so to speak, or the areas where they stand and things have to hit. So let me explain here. Kicking off a new era, literally. The owners today, uh, remember, this was going to be shelved maybe till, till May. Mm-hmm. It's officially passed. The NFL hybrid, it's called the NFL hybrid kickoff rule. After years of tweaks, you know this you know, and changes in the kickoff, it, it took one of the most exciting moments in football in the kickoff game in general because of the injuries and concussions, and they made it a dead ceremonial play. It was just like you kick off yeah. and then you set up an offense, and nobody returns anything. So the league now hopes that this overhaul will yield what it wants: fewer injuries, but more excitement on the punt and the kickoff returns. So NFL yes, owners... Are, you need to get both. Yes, and you can do that with this. And John Fossil, guys, Cowboys special teams uh, coordinator, was intricate in doing studies on this, presenting it to the NFL, and he basically changed all the owners' minds on his own, basically, to get this rule passed. This is a Cowboy rule you're seeing now. So NFL owners adopted this, this, this overhauled XFL-inspired kickoff play. There are some tweaks from the XFL rule, which the NFL has done here. I'll explain in a minute. So... Um, landmark change that could trickle down now what we're hearing is to college and even high school and prep levels isn't this already how they oh no it's the nope. xfl yep, yep, that yep. they do it so this means what does this mean more kickoff returns fewer high speed collisions and blocks and, mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff and an, an expected uptick in scoring not just because you can return the kickoff but now you also can get better field position to start every play Good whether point. it goes out of whether it gets a kickoff and it goes out of the end zone or you return it and you have a better chance to, you know, get make something happen. So, so it definitely plays into, yeah. you know, some of the themes we already heard that the NFL, you know, wants to see more scoring. Yeah. John Fossil himself from the Cowboys. 
And he had his little buddy there, his helper there, Saints, the Saints uh, special teams coordinator, Darren Rizzi. They represented all NFL special teams coaches this week in Orlando for the owners' meetings and the, in the, in the league meetings. And they were there to help explain and support today's approval of this new kickoff rule. Fossil said, quote, the kickoff returner value is going to skyrocket. And that's why I want to go back. See. That's why I'm going to go back to Cordell Patterson and the Steelers and the move they made, how it is very good for $3 million And he goes, he does offense and return, a great returner. And these kind of situations, the Steelers got a great player there, a guy who can get him a couple touchdowns this year. It could change games, right? So it's worth it for six for for six million for two years, in my opinion. So now you heard the, the way this shit went down. Just a couple other things I want to throw out there. The competition committee chairman Rich McKay he cites the whopping drop in number of return yards. Mm-hmm. It was forty five thousand return yards in that range in two thousand and ten. Last year it dropped from forty five thousand to thirteen thousand yards. That's how big the drop is. So they said this has gone to nothing. It's gone from an exciting play that gave, gave yards and offensive, an offensive, you know, good field position to a, a, an irrelevant play. So that was the pri- one of the primary motivations to get the kickoff game going again. But they wanted to keep those concussions and those injuries way down. So this yeah, they weren't going to go back to having players getting get hurt killed again. That there, wasn't yeah. an option anymore. Yeah, so they so- did have to find something. You know, that satisfied mm. this compromise. Again, I do think they did. Now, let me explain. The new kickoff rule is going to be on a one-year trial. It's not just set for stone. It's literally got to be re-accepted next year. But it's just for 2024 as of now. There's been a lot of confidence, though, in this overhaul. Bringing excitement and competitiveness back to the kickoff. And it took a lot of laboring, fighting, convincing from various special team coordinators led by John Fossil from the Cowboys. Yeah, he was the leader. But the owners decided to ultimately approve this motion now instead of waiting until May. The XFL data from past seasons gives the NFL confidence that it could move forward without a preseason trial run, which I mentioned they might do it just for preseason. Oh. They said, nah, it's going to be the whole year. So, No, it's just good to know. Yeah, so now it's going to be here all season. And the one thing the NFL might want to look at, though, I will say, one of the little issues may be, and I'll explain in a minute because how it's set up, and you'll see on your screen there. But one of the, the NFL might want to look at the new kickoff rules is how do they enforce penalties after a two-point conversion or an extra point? If you run into the kicker, how do you apply that now? When you you know, like you won't have a chance to return the ball anymore. Here's the thing, though. I'm not sure they're going to do that. Maybe it's going to, you know, no, maybe, it's not, maybe, maybe it won't make a big difference where the ball is kicked from because at that point it just – it's not just about powering the ball out of the end zone now. you got to remember, it used to be about that. Now they've changed it. It has changed. So it's about skill kicking. It's about an, an accuracy situation for kickoffs. So let me explain. Look at your screen, guys. This originated in the XFL. As you can see, the kicker, the kickoff kicker, okay? Yeah. You see that little football back there in the left? Yep. Yeah. That is where the ball is getting kicked off. It's on your own 35-yard line. Okay. You got it? The other 10 players of the 11 players of your team, they're lined up on the 40-yard line. Okay, so the of the X's. other team, yeah, the blue X's. They're on the other team's forty, though, not on their own. You know, instead of lining up with the kicker there on the thirty-five or forty, they're on the they're twenty yards down the field already. Yeah, and they're just standing there, all ten guys, and the kicker is all the way by himself back there, twenty-five yards behind them. You guys follow me so far? Yep, I'm with you. The other side, the return team. You see the red dots. All right, you are allowed to. I think you have to. I don't know if you. Have, I don't think you have to have two. You have up to two returners. That you can have set up in what's called the landing zone. If you look to the right, you see what I mean, that green area. You can have two returners back there. You can have one. And the other, you know, nine or ten guys got to be lined up in that little range there um, on their your own 35 to the 30-yard line. You cannot get out of that area. So they got to stand there in that area and because that's going to dem- that's going to diminish – the impact of the blue X's running down the field for 30 yards, colliding with the red dots. That's what gives the concussions. That's what gives the injuries. This stops the injuries of concussion, right? Right. You got two returners or one returner, but you got two returners back there because that landing zone is a free-for-all. And look where the players are starting now. They're not going 70 yards down the field. They're going 30 yards down the field. Exactly. They're on your ass. Yeah, the you got to catch that. Very different. You got to catch that ball now in the landing zone. It's going to be exciting, guys. Trust me on this. And so 
Kickers kick at the 35. The other 10 players on the kicking team are on the 40-yard line of the other team. Up to two returners in the landing zone for the return team. And that is, of course, as you can see, the, as you look to the right, the landing zone is that green zone from the goal line to, your, to the 20-yard line, right? No player can move except for the kicker or the one or two kickoff returners. There's the only three players that can move on your field. The guys in the landing zone, which would be two of them, and the kicker, of course, to kick the ball. Every other guy, however you set up in that area there, you got to stay there. That's it. In that in that 40 to, to uh, you know that 40 to 35 yard zone there where they get they're five yards away from each other. And nobody can move until when? Until either the ball hits the ground. So if that ball is over your head, you still can't move. Mm-hmm. That ball is, is hits it, uh, the ground, and then you can run if you're the kickoff team. And the return team, you can't block until that ball hits the ground or hits the player who's in the landing zone. You know, the, the, the returner catches the ball. As soon as one of those red dots that's in that green zone catch the ball, then that blue line of kickoff start line and those blue X's, they can now run. Those red dots in the setup zone, now they can go block. On the red team, on the red. Team. You guys feeling me here? It's okay. it's all right happening right there between the forty yard line and the goal line. Everything's happening there in a short area for less impact and more excitement because now you got yourself. To me, it reminds me of like a end around or a reverse where you have a, a, a you know a whole bunch of guys on the line of scrimmage and a guy running left to right and trying to get through that wave of people. That's what it's going to come down to here. So. And I said this before, guys, if there's like, uh, if the ball goes out of the end zone, it goes to the 30-yard line. It was at the 35, they moved it to the 30. The whole idea was not to, to penalize the kickoff team more, to make them have to force them to kick the ball in that landing zone, to make them force a kickoff to happen, which by forcing a kickoff to happen, you know, you try to get them behind that 30 now. Or, you know, it might be easier for them to break a big one and go to the, go all the way or take, take it to the 40 or 50 on the other side, you know, so... There's there's a lot of different like other rules I'm sure we'll hear about. I've already discussed it when it comes down to if you kick the ball out of bounds, it goes to the 30. If you kick the ball out of the end zone, it goes back to the 30. If it hits the landing zone, that's it. It's a it's it's a fumble. You know what I'm saying? Just like yeah. in kickoffs always in the past were, right? It's a it's a live ball. So that is the story of this new kickoff rule. I want to know what you guys think in a minute. Because I want to also finish up with what Cavante Turpin said. Okay. And he seems to be extremely excited about this new kickoff rule. He said, quote, this is going to be a show to watch. Oh. And you know what, guys? I agree. Because Cavante Turpin can do a lot in a little space. And I think when you have everybody on top of you already, once he slides and, and, and slips and spins through that first wave, no one's going to catch him. Cavante Turpin's going to score his first kickoff return this year. Guarantee it. You heard it from me. And I'm gar- that's a fucking bold prediction or whatever you want to call yeah. it. He'll score more than one, though. I think with this he, might go change, to, he might go four or five. Yeah, I think with this rule change, special teams will probably be the best part of our team this upcoming year. In the sense of like... <laughs> well, we went out, we, we got them locked up first. Yep, yeah, they're going to look great. They're going to be consistent. I mean, I everything you would want from a yeah. special teams unit, we will very likely see. And why is that? Season. The main reason because John Foss was the, an innovator of this. Yeah. He knows exactly what you got to do with the tricks and the tweaks. So at least we got an advantage there, guys. Not offense, not defense, but special teams. So we got them. Maybe that's your thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> so but I, you know, I've never been more excited for special teams. Cavante uh, Turpin was PFF's number one graded kick returner in 2023. That was last year. He had an 81.5 and just his ability to return kicks. So he just didn't get any returns in two years in a regular season. No kickoff returns for touchdowns, but. We were at the game at the Rams. We were at the game where he almost went all the way um, because the he did go all the way. There was a penalty. Another one, he almost went all the way on a punt return. So, Kawhi Turpin, he is one of the best returners in the league. I believe it's going to be a very special season for Kavante Turpin. I think it'll be him and Cordell Patterson fighting it out for, on each side in the AFC and NFC when it comes to who's the best returner. We shall see. We shall see. So, Roger Goodell said this about the new kickoff rule. He said, quote, I think we're still going to have to tinker with it but I think it'll be a big improvement and bring the play of kickoffs to being a relevant play. I think we can do it so that the injury rate will also drop. And I agree. I got to say, I agree with Roger Goodell. I agree with John Fossil. I like this rule change. It's going to be more exciting. And hey, that's our now that's our strongest part of our team. 
know. The, tick, the, the, the special teams portion with Brian Anger, pro bowler, with, Brian, with, with Brandon Aubrey, pro bowler, with Trent Siegel, almost was a pro bowler, his long snapper, and CJ Goodwin, the ace, a couple other good players on, you know, on kickoff coverage, Sam Williams and others. And, you know, you still got uh, Kavate Turpin returning kickoffs and punts. Right. So uh, we're in great shape there. Hey, that's the best part of our team. So, what are what are you thinking? You kind of said your your piece about this. What's the yeah, chat let me thinking up about the chat today? here? So first of all, Jerry said you've got to have a nice and trimmed landing zone. <laughs> Jerry yeah. knows. Anyone knows? Jerry knows. Um, but but I actually want to read Seabass's comment first. He said, "I'm telling y'all now, special teams is about to be way more exciting." Yep. If you watch the XFL games, I hope they adopt even more, specifically, the physicality aspect of the game, which is diminishing in today's NFL again. I feel like this strikes a really good balance between that kind of similar type of physicality. I I know for you, you kind of said you, you know, see certain similar. I feel like this is a combination of like an onside kick and uh, like a, an adapted kind of punt return kickoff type of hmm. scenario. You know what I mean? Just yeah, because of they're the right distance on you. And, yeah. and it's more the intensity. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Every that play gets, is going to be, it's going to be, you know, pressure. Yeah, so uh, to me, that me. new aspect is definitely going to be interesting. I also, the first thing that popped into my head, too, is I, no offense, hope it doesn't happen to us, but I can't wait to see the first uh, fumble happen in this situation because it's going to be insanity. Yeah, you got to be, look like yeah. a, it's going to feel like, like a, a punt. Slippery egg. When you know a punt and sometimes, you know, your guy's already around you, like it's going to be like that sometimes. Yeah. Gonna, because some of these guys going to be around them. But here's the thing, though. You got to remember, he doesn't start running until he, they don't start running after him until he catches the ball. So once he catches the ball, they're all on the 40. Again, that's why I said it reminds me a little bit of an onside kick. Where like, and again, similar in the sense of like you got to wait for the guy to, you know, for the ball to like but, cross but, that But do you line know how they figured it. that out? How? John Fossil, you know what he did? He basically calculated where was the ball whenever the returner got, catches the ball. Where were the, the kickoff coverage guys at? Like, and they were always around the 40. Hmm. So it's going to be the same. You're just starting off with less acceleration which actually helps the kickoff return team because okay. now i think they gotta they gotta you know set up a little bit better rather than coming down and setting up in fi- in, in, in you know in a, in five seconds they gotta set up in half a second they gotta go ready they're set up they're going and that's going to be interesting how that works out and how teams will figure out ways to slip through and go all the way because all you gotta do is beat the kicker after that very very it's true. gonna be interesting so uh, again any other comments on the chat about this real quick just quick comments no, we don't have to have um, like let me see uh, Tom Richards said, until the ball catch is, you know, or is on the ground. Right. Let me see. Mike Aldana said, thank you, Vince McMahon. <laughs> I, I, he did do one good thing. Tom Richards said, CJ Goodwin was a great signing yes, for the yes. Cowboys. One of the, like we said. CJ Goodwin is an ace for our team. When a, an a, a special team's ace. This is why it's important to have Goodwin back, Trent Sieg, Anger, Aubrey, and, you know, Sam Williams is still very good there. We got a couple other good players that have been, I have a lot of time with Fossil in this special team side of things who are special teams guys. We're going to still have, I think we're going to be fine in coverage. I think we're going to have an advantage on returns because Fossil knows probably what works best. You know, where do you attack? You, you got, you know, in a way you got to attack like one of these holes here. And if you can block in the middle and just get past one or two guys, Turpin could be gone. And that, and that could go to any team. So I, don't, I want our teams going to defend this. And how teams are going to block for this. It's going to be interesting. But again, I'm going to tell you this. I think Fossil has an upper hand on most other, other than maybe us and the Saints. Everybody else is a bit behind on this. I, yeah. I, I truly believe that. But it's going to be fun. I'm excited for it. No, I agree. So, and yeah, who would have actually thought that the XFL could have had <laughs> such an impact? impact. Yeah. It's, so. it's going to probably be a NFL changing impact from here on out. You know, uh, who was it that he, what I, 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 God, I can't remember who had said that. I could have sworn I had seen it. And I don't know why I don't have it here now, but I, I could have sworn that John Fossil had made a mention, or was it wasn't maybe the other day, that this is going to have a bigger uh, uh, impact. A bigger impact than... Like on scoring or just overall? No, an impact in the, in the game than when they moved the goal post back from the from the back in the 60s mm-hmm. when they had it on the goal line to the end, back of the end zone. It's going to be... It, it's like this is going to have a bigger impact on the game of yeah. football than that here it is yeah here's the thing and i almost forgot to say again john fossil yesterday said that this kickoff rule inspired by the xfl and made true because of john fossil from the cowboys is a bigger change to the nfl than the integration of the two-point conversion 
That, that was a big change. You went from kicking the extra points from the one-yard line to now we're kicking it from the 27-yard line. Um, you know, a 27-yard kick instead of a three-yard yeah, kick. That's a big and difference. a two-point conversion, which is a huge game changer of how you even strategize in football, right? Fossil's saying this is a bigger change than that. It's bigger than when the goalposts in the 60s were moved from the front of the end zone to the back of the end zone, which obviously you have to strategize how to throw the ball. It hit the, sometimes you run into the goal po- into the goalpost. Sometimes the player you know would run into it. Sometimes the ball would hit the goal bar, the crossbar. So now it's behind the end zone. He opens up the field. Now it makes it a little harder for the defense to play defense. You don't have that goalpost to help defend. So it, these are big changes in football history. And John Fossil saying this kickoff rule is bigger than all of them. So that's... I don't know if it is or not, but it feels like it's going to be a big change. I don't know. That's the way I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it's going to be a big change. I don't know you guys out there. But I think no, we all I can mean, see it yeah, happening. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much all on the same page yeah. as far as that. So, so move, and yeah, yeah. CBS also throwing out there, yeah, Fossil being the driver mm-hmm. of this. He knows the tricks. You know, most definitely means that we have that upper advantage. For sure. And he knows the tricks. He knows the, the where you break down on this kind of stuff. I'm sure he's, he studied this for two years. He's definitely got an advantage. Now, what other things happened in the NFL for the Shield and some other changes, rule changes and things like this? Roger Goodell said that the league was, quote, hard at work. Hard at work immediately, he said, regarding the tampering investigation into the Falcons and the Eagles. So that stuff there, you know, they are looking into this, Goodell. Don't want any kind of corruption going on. Now, the owners also today have voted to, de- to approve a trade deadline that now is going to be pushed back one more week. Remember, guys, that some some half the half the group, half the league didn't want to push back the deadline. The other half wanted to push it back. The trade deadline is now going to be moved back uh, into the I think an extra week. I don't know if it's the first week of November now instead of the last week of October, but it's now going to be pushed back. And it, it, it's now officially the trade deadline is going to be on the Tuesday after the week nine games, whatever date that is. So that Tuesday after week nine, trade deadline. It, it used to be week eight. That's all I'm going to say. That's a change there. NFL teams also are now allowed to place up to two players on the reserve list before the roster cut-down deadline. But they still can designate them as eligible to return. So instead of having these guys uh, on, on an injury kind of reserve list, like a PUP list, something like that, you can now designate them to return so they come back sooner than have to miss the six weeks if they stay on that list. And it gives you two extra spaces on your roster for cut-down day. So that's something, something more interesting. We'll talk about that as we get closer to cut downs. But a slight little tweak there where now on our reserve, on our injured reserve list, we can have two guys that we can get back sooner than have to hold out for eight or six or 12 weeks, whatever it is, the penalty, if you keep them on these lists. You probably can only hold them out for maybe three weeks. I have not heard, though, what the actual uh, numbers are going to be. Previously, all players that were sent to the reserve, injured reserve, kind of PUP, reserve NFI lists, before the cut downs, were ineligible to ever come back. <laughs> and if you were on like a short, another kind of a designation, sometimes you have to wait a certain amount of time. It sounds like... Yeah, like if you were out, you were out. Yeah, That's it. It sounds now like they're going to have some of these guys eligible for returns, whether it's going to be six weeks, eight weeks, or three weeks. We'll see what happens. Um, but just gives you a couple, a little bit more to play with, and you don't have to worry about losing guys for the year. If they're on that list, you maybe lose them for a couple, month, for a couple weeks, uh, maybe a month or two, I don't know. So we'll see. Another change, NFL is now allowing NFL teams to promote a practice squad quarterback. We talked about this, it was going to maybe happen. Now our, now the third string quarterback, basically, or practice squad, practice, it has to be practice squad, quarterback. They will now be able, every team can now promote that quarterback to the active roster only for game days as an emergency third quarterback as an unlimited amount of times during a season. So, for example, Trey Lance would have to be on our, or Cooper Rush, would have to have a quarterback on our practice squad. Not on our roster. Not the third stringer. Okay. We'd have to have, let's say, I would say we have two quarterbacks and then have that third quarterback have to be on the practice squad. Now, if it's Trey Lance, someone's going to take him. That's why you can't do that. Okay. We, have, we might have to keep all three. But if a team has, to, let's say we had Danucci, all right, <laughs> and he's on a practice squad, or Will Greer, and he's on the practice squad, well, what would have happened is he would have been able to, every single week, be you know, elevated to the, you know, in one of those three elevate, we had two elevations. Yeah. This would be a third elevation they're allowing. Okay. But it's only for quarterbacks. Only quarterbacks. You can't do it unless Again, it's a quarterback. Now, That's I'm it. I'm guessing the large number of quarterbacks that were injured somewhat recently had an effect on that decision. Well, again, again, this is the thing. It's basically your emergency quarterback. 
Now your emergency quarterback, which they did that last year with, I think it was, you know, you had, you remember we had Trey Lance inactive, but the only way he would be made active would be if both other quarterbacks got hurt. Exactly. Now you can still elevate your practice squad guy, quarterback, and he can play whenever you want him to play. You understand? You don't have to yes. wait for injury. You can play him whenever you want. Yeah. But you can have that third spot now with a third quarterback. Maybe, you, maybe you're maybe you not sure about your backup, right? Let's you have two backups that are close. One's on a practice squad, one's in 53. That's That gives you a thing. Maybe against this team, you want to play the practice squad guy. He's maybe it's that close yeah, with him or and the, the backup. Say, you know, which happened to the Cowboys at least once or twice this past season. Uh, let's say you're in a blowout scenario. And, you know, yep. your backup has been in there for a while. But, heck, you want to give your other guy a little bit more experience, see what he right. has, too. When we had, when this rule was going on last year, we have Trey Lance, but only emergency situation that all got, both Dak and Cooper Rush would have to get hurt. While now, if that was to happen, I mean, one of the, Trey Lance would have to be on the practice squad. But if he was on the practice squad and no one plucked him from there, that, which they would, mm-hmm. if that was the case and we were, had Cooper Rush for a series or two and it's 43-3, to three, we have a whole quarter to go. We could bring in Trey Lance without using up a roster spot. We can bring in Trey Lance without having him, without having to hope that Dak or, or Cooper Rush get hurt to see him play. That's how it changes some. But it really don't change for us a lot because there's no way in hell the Cowboys will have Trey Lance just hanging out there. We wanted to trade him. We're going to keep him on the practice squad. Someone's definitely going to take him. Exactly. That's not happening. Unless it's Cooper Rush, he could be the practice squad guy. And I think somebody might take him too. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. As a backup now, guys. I know some of you guys think he's a starter. He ain't no fucking starter. But as a backup, I mean, no one wanted to pay him $2 million. So they might want to pay him $1 million <laughs> and pluck him up for a practice squad. That's how That's how it is. So just wanted to throw all that out there, guys. Uh, a lot of different rules. There's a couple more coming. Like, this is a kind of a smaller one, but it's kind of interesting. Because you know the, the headsets that the coaches wear? Mm-hmm. And, and all these headsets, guys. An unusual deal was struck today with the owners that now are returning corporate branding to coaches' headsets for the first time since Bose. They had walked away, what, two years ago from from, from branding the, the, the headsets. So now under this deal, there's going to be two brands now that share the rights to NFL's biggest vacant asset, you know, advertising on the headsets. Sony and the NFL's current 5G. I mean, so Sony and the current 5G and tech sponsor for the NFL, Verizon. Yeah. So Sony and Verizon got the rights to brand the coaches' headsets with their logos. The exact contours of that uh, collaboration, who gets what, are still up in the air. But the the understanding is that Verizon will get the headset branding at the league-owned events. Super Bowl. It's going to be Verizon. Sony gets the regular season. And that's what it's going to probably be. Yeah, I know it's not a big deal for us, but you'll see headsets with the Sony insignia on it throughout the whole year when you get to the playoffs. And and I guess, you know, Pro Bowl and, and you get rid of that playoffs. So let's say Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, NFL-inspired events. It's going to be Verizon, which is the NFL logo for, or the NFL 5G, you know, sponsor for them. So there you go. Now, other schedule. We'll talk about some scheduling changes or updates from the NFL, the offices. And their announcements today. There'll be more announcements, I'm sure. A couple more tomorrow and the next day, but there's going to be a lot less. 2024 Hall of Fame game has been announced. The Chicago Bears against the Houston Texans. So there you go, guys. The first game of the year has been officially announced. Preseason game, Thursday, August 1st. The first day of August. You can't forget that. It's a month. It's a month. exactly a month after our seven-year anniversary on YouTube. <laughs> so on August 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central, The Hall of Fame game, Bears, Texans, the first padded football game, preseason nonetheless, crap. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, NFL's Brian Rolop says that in the in-season hard knocks, you know, they always have the the training camp hard knocks we were on a couple years ago. They also have the in-season hard knocks, which I actually like that. They had the the Jets last year, or the Dolphins, I'm sorry. They had the the Jets first and the Dolphins in the in-season. Now they're going to change up the in-season thing. The in-season hard knocks is going to focus on the entire division, one division. We don't know. There's there's eight divisions. So one full division will be followed in this year's in-season hard knocks. The division has not been named. But if they say NFC East, <laughs> you're going to see Eagles, Cowboys, Washington, Commanders, and the Giants. And let's be real, though. It would make a lot of sense if they went as NFC East because of All the things changes. outside of just the Cowboys stuff, yeah. right? I, With the Commanders yeah. and their new... You know, kind of face the Eagles, obviously being somewhat 
recent, yeah. you know, Super Bowl appearance. My thing is though, I think they want to look for the division that's maybe the the closest. Okay. And you could, you know, I, you know, they did the the Dolphins. I would say the Jets, Dolphins, Buffalo. That could be a good one. I get the Patriots in there, whatever. But I, what about the upstart? Yeah, the Houston Texans, Jacksonville Jaguars, Tennessee Titans, the Colts with Richardson. That's yeah. the division. It's um, that's my thought. They're gonna pick that one. That's a not not a great division, but it's a it's a close division. They could also no, pick the, I, I get your the Browns, Steelers, you know, Ravens. The, the you know that's another good division they could pick. The Bengals. There's a couple good, a couple really tighter divisions than, than the NFC East. I'm gonna be honest. So you know, whatever it is, it is. I almost hope it's not the Cowboys because I hate when the Cowboys have cameras, more cameras around because then they lose more fucking focus. Yeah, Either, we, we don't yeah. need to encourage Jerry any more than he already yeah. has. You know, he'd love to see it though. Either way, we don't know what division it's gonna be yet, but the in season hard knocks will be announced soon. And it's going to be a whole division to be four teams. NFL is also having an announcement today of planning two. They're having twins on Christmas. They're going to have two games on Christmas this year. They had a baby. You don't remember? You remember last Christmas? It was like the record-breaking numbers for them. They never had numbers that sure. high. And this year they're going to have two games on Christmas. And you know what's even weirder than having two games on Christmas? What? Christmas falls on Wednesday. Mm. A Wednesday. So. The plan is for the four teams that are playing on Wednesday. That's I don't I don't think that's ever really I don't remember the last time we had a Wednesday game to be honest. But I think it was I think a, it might have been for COVID reasons. Maybe COVID. I don't know, one day we had one time we had some weather reasons and it was a Tuesday game. There was another sure, time there was, like there was a, a there was a, I think one of the kickoff games we kicked off the season with. I think it was I think it was a Wednesday because there was some some kind of some kind of situation going on on, the, on that Thursday. So, so we've had it, but rarely on a Wednesday. There's gonna be two games on Wednesday. December 25th, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And so here's the plan, though. There's going to be four teams playing. Okay. Two games, right? The plan is that those four teams that are playing on that Wednesday will also be part of a doubleheader the previous Saturday. So those four teams will be playing on that Saturday before Christmas. So they have a four-day break, which is exactly... They, the NFL is saying, basically, it's like a Thursday night game. It's like a Thanksgiving game. Okay. That's what the way. So they're starting at Saturday instead of Sunday, and going li- going on Wednesday instead of Thursday. Which That's I, the deal. I, there. Which you know it makes sense. Makes sense. But Especially for that money still. they're gonna bring in, and then the, you know yeah the owners get the money, but so do the players because they're gonna have a bigger a bigger salary cap jump next year, and that means more money for the players. So everyone helps. It helps everybody here for when it comes to the league. So just for an idea here, it's gonna be it's gonna to be tough for those teams to have to deal with that back to back. And I don't know if they'll pick the cow. I mean, the cow would be a prime team. We, already, you have we to know remember, they will. Part I know, but part of the problem is since we're locked into that Thanksgiving game, yep, yep. I can't really see us being one of those teams. But you know what? The whole point is it gives those types of teams an opportunity to do their yep. thing. And remember. Christmas changes every year, so eventually it'll circle back to where it makes sense to have the Cowboys play on. Christmas oh yeah, no, I know that. So not a. It's I'm more about not, the fact that they're know. gonna have a double header. It's gonna be probably a, a, a fucking national game. So, so whoever teams they pick, they gotta be big teams. You That's see, the point. What I could see is us playing one of those teams hmm. on Saturday, yeah. but then we play the following Sunday, not right, on that right. Christmas, Christmas day. day. So here's the thing, though. Listen to this, baby. Starting Christmas Day, this is we're gonna have a week long of football. A week long stretch, which I don't know if we've ever had uh, seven days in a row of football. December twenty fifth on Wednesday, two NFL games. December twenty sixth on Thursday, there's going to be a Thursday night game. Mm-hmm. The twenty eighth, which is a Saturday, is going to be NFL games. The twenty ninth, which is a Sunday, there's going to be NFL games. The thirtieth, a Monday night game, and then December thirty first, you're going to have the college quarterfinal champion. You know, college uh, yeah. football uh, playoffs, the quarterfinals. And on the 31st, is the, I'm sorry, you're going to have the college quarterfinals on December 31st and January 1st. So if you're watching football other than Friday of that week, from from from, from Wednesday till January 1st, it's going to be football out your ass. So get ready, guys. And, you know, five of those days, NFL, two of them college, uh, college playoffs. So there you go. By the way, speaking of playoffs, they also announced the NFL that Amazon will have a wild card playoff game this year going forward. So, which we kind of knew. Yeah, no surprise there. So you got to have that Amazon Prime if you want to watch one of those playoff games. And I just can't imagine they'll do the Cowboys there. But you just never know. You never know. Now, what we do know 
Uh, any any quick? I was going to ask any quick comments on any of these rule changes. We're done with the NFL rule changes. We're going to get to the Cowboys now. I know <laughs> it's been like ben forty five minutes. It the Purdy rule. He said need for an emergency quarterback <laughs> on the roster. Yeah, well, remember that's when he got hurt, and then they had to have uh, McCaffrey play quarterback. So yeah, Dak delusional fan said Tyreek Hill may return kickoffs now. Yeah, yeah you, that, that's the kind of guy you want doing that. That's exactly the guy you want. So yeah, it's going to change a lot of things. I love the kickoff return rule, but anyways. Now starting, new rookies. I don't know. You guys get the feel I'm going with here? Yeah, Will McClay. All right, our our our, our draft master here. All right, we got the, we seen the draft hats. You know, we 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 know our draft picks right there behind them. But right now, when it comes to this draft and who can we, you know, who will be who will we be bringing in for this top thirty visit? We got thirty players. You can bring into your facility and check out. And usually the Cowboys do draft one or two of those guys. Uh, almost definitely. So right now the list is getting bigger. Okay. Edgerin Copper. Edgerin Cooper, linebacker from Texas A&M. A guy that I really like. Although I've heard some negative. We'll check into these guys in April. Trust me. But I'm hearing a lot about Edgerin Cooper, which I seem to like as an off-ball linebacker. Maybe in the second round. Brandon Coleman, offensive tackle from TCU. Travis Glover, offensive tackle from Georgia State. Malachi Corley, wide receiver from Western Kentucky. We talked about him. He's the, the, the yards after catch king in college football. And with the new hip drop rule, he has an advantage. It's going to be harder to tackle him. Um, Jonathan Brooks, of course, running back from Texas with that torn ACL. Oh, boy. If the Cowboys take him with the second round pick, you will hear me fucking yell. <laughs> yeah. So much cursing that they're going to ban us on, on YouTube. And then two linebackers, uh, two more linebackers, Jordan McGee, which we talked about yesterday from Temple. And Trevin Wallace from Kentucky, which he was the first guy on this top three list, another linebacker. And then today they added another guy. Who? Running back prospect that I don't believe is getting enough, you know, kind of shout outs right now. But keep an ear and eye on him. Rasheen Ali from Marshall. Cowboys are bringing him in for a top 30 visit. Another running back. So that's, you know, two running backs, Brooks and Ali. Now, Ali had a bicep injury in January. So there was no testing at the combine or pro day. But he is going to be cleared by July, so it's a, it's a risk. But that's one of those later round running backs the Cowboys may try to go after there. He has 30 visits, though, set up right now with the Chiefs, the Falcons, the Ravens, the Titans, and our Dallas Cowboys. Mm. A later mid-round kind of running back there. There's a lot of running backs you can get later on. That's why I don't want to get Jonathan Brooks in the second or third. It's a waste, and he got an ACL tear. What the fuck? I don't know. Well, you, yeah, uh, look, well, we do know. We yeah. know exactly what. Well, you talk about uh, running backs, right? Who's our starting running back? Do you remember? I mean, Dowdle right now, Rico right? Dowdle is our starting running back, fellas and ladies and ladies and fellas. So now with that in mind, we're going to hear from the front office in a minute. Mm-hmm. But Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook an hour ago, two hours ago, were just announced as true options from somebody from the front office that the Cowboys are looking at at running back. So, I would not put too much into this, although it was, it was Gelkin and other very known people that kind of followed this up. The, Cow, the Cowboys are expected, of course, you'll hear it from, the Jones, from Jerry Jones, you'll hear it from McCarthy, we are going to draft a running back. That's why I wanted to make sure I, I led into this with, with another top 30. You know, Ali from, from Baylor and, of course, Jonathan Brooks from Texas. Those are the two guys we have on our top 30 list. There's others the Cowboys do like. So, we're going to draft one, but a, pro, a proven veteran running back would no doubt and is a need. Dole, you know, Rico Dowdle is good, but he's a backup or third stringer. He is not a starter. So I think a rookie would be able to be, you know, would would fit well with Dowdle and a veteran running back in the NFL, not some rookie leading our way here going forward. So to me, a proven a proven veteran will help complement a rookie draft pick, a rookie drafting running back, right? And right now, the two names that are out there, guys, that, again, I like I like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. You know, maybe J.K. Dobbins, if he's cheap enough. You know, Kareem Hunt. There's a couple other, but these are the two names that have just popped up. And I don't really mind Dalvin Cook. But Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott, and I'm more of a Dalvin Cook fan for this. I know what Zeke can do. I know what he's done. And I know he can do some things to help us. I wouldn't be mad about short yardage Zeke. I know, but the point is that, like you said, if right now you're talking about an option between these two people specifically well, and you had a choice. Now, last year, Dalvin Cook didn't even do as good as Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke did better. But Zeke had a bad year, too. So, look, pass blocking, we know Zeke can do it. You know, running in tough yardage, we know both can do it. Catching the ball, Zeke can do it, and so can Dalvin Cook. 
And if I'm not mistaken, I think Dalvin Cook is okay in pass blocking as well. So they're about the same. And that the Cow- you know why the Cowboys are looking? Not because they want them. The Cowboys are looking because those are going to be the leftovers of the running backs currently in free agency. So yeah. right now, dredges. Yeah, right now Zeke and Dal- Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook are the two veteran options who stand to draw a lot of consideration from the Cowboys right now as free agency goes into the next wave and progresses. Zeke, of course, spent seven years with the Cowboys, 2016 and 2022. And someone like Dalvin Cook, remember remember Dalvin Cook? The, why is he so... Why am I bringing him up? Why could he be a, a, a target? Do you know why? Where did Dalvin Cook play most of his career? Uh, shit, I can't remember. The Minnesota Vikings. Oh, there you go. And who okay. was the coach there for most of his career? For all of his career? It was Mike Zimmer. So Zim that, so I personally would like the reuniting of Dalvin Cook with Mike Zimmer, who was the head coach there. And Dalvin, you know, again, he was with Zimmer as his head coach from the Vikings in 2017 and 2021. So Zimmer was re- fired. So I personally like, you know, I can see the move for both of these guys. It's not going to be a, 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 a game-changing move. I think the fans would, some fans would like Zeke. Some fans would hate Zeke. I think more, more fans would like Dalvin Cook because he's a new guy and they have visions of him with the yeah. Vikings, but they're both neither neither of these guys would be any kind of, you know, game changing fucking move for the Cowboys. It'd just be a, a little bit of an additional veteran presence for a rookie and Rico Dowdle. Which I think we need. So here's the thing, guys, that kind of I'm paraphrasing here what the Dallas Morning News found out, but they said as the Cowboys build their backfield in twenty twenty four, the future may include a familiar face as EQ Elliott because of his Cowboy time there, and Dalvin Cook because of his time with Mike Zimmer. Two veteran options who stand to draw the most consideration from the Cowboys. Multiple people familiar with the players, with Zeke and Dalvin Cook, said that the veterans have interest in potentially signing with the Cowboys. So it's kind of an all the way around about saying, saying the Cowboys have a little interest, the players seem to have more interest. <laughs> so Dalvin Cook wants to reunite with Zimmer, Zeke wants to reunite with the Cowboys, and Dak, his buddy, reminder for everybody, if you get Zeke, the Dallas is right on the hook for $6 million of dead money in Ezekiel Elliott's contract. So we're already paying Zeke. Six, not, we're not paying him money. We're paying on the cap, $6 million. So we, we pay him the one and a half. Now we're, pay, now we're paying the running the, the Zeke spot $7.5 million. Same thing with Dalvin. We get him for one point five. We're paying that Zeke spot, Dalvin Cook spot, for basically seven point five million. I mean, so, it, you know. the thing is that if you do nothing, you're still basically paying six point five million for nothing. You're still paying six million. Or six yeah, million. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. So, anyways, the thing is, guys, I want to know what do you think, baby? What, what's kind of your preference out of these two? If there's even a preference, because right now that's the the hottest names for the for the Cowboys. Not what we want. The Cowboys front office wants is Zeke back or Dalvin Cook back to team up with Rico Dowdle and a rookie. I do what do you think, think Cooks gives us more, Cook. but. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just want to make sure. You know, we got Brandon Cooks, and this would be Dalvin Cook. Cook. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I think Dalvin Cook does give us a little bit more than Zeke currently can at this point. But let's be real: if both guys are on a similar level, the Cowboys will absolutely go with Zeke. Hmm. You know, for for all the reasons that we know, right? He's familiar <coughs> with the team. Friends with Dak. You know, friends with Dak. I'm sure he likes, you know, Jerry likes him. Familiar with, you know, the the organization, Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, and we'll probably, let's be real, take a more (coughs) team-friendly deal Mm, than even Dalvin Cook. Yeah. So. Oh, you go. What's the chat thinking, baby? Real quick, on just these two guys. said, please, no, Z. There you go. Mike Aldana said, mmm, leftovers. (laughs) Thomas Garrett said, you know, you know, you know. I want to know what he thinks. He played against him when he coached. Yep, 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 the Vikings. As far as Dalvin Cook, too. Uh So, Griff181 said, give me short yardage Zeke. Oh, see? So, Andre Rodriguez said, bring back Zeke. Cowboys are still <laughs> paying it. him $6 million. Exactly. You know, that I, needs his one yard buddy. I love the fact that we have like two or three guys that all in on Zeke, two or three guys that can't stand the one Zeke, and rather have Dalvin. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's really a split here about this. And I, I'm not even hating either guy that comes here. I just think maybe Dalvin Cook gives us a little fresh freshness there. Yeah. And Zeke, we know what we're going to get from so Zeke. Dallas Cowboys 92 also said Zeke. So. Right. Mostly Zekers in the house. And so I'm cool with Zeke. Again, guess who Your reasoning was great, baby. You get him here. cheaper who and he, we, and we all know for, system. more familiar with? Zeke, exactly. of course. But that's one of the reasons why I'm familiar with Zeke and I know that he can give us what he, other than the short yardage touchdowns, which we need, that's really the limit of, of Zeke. With Dalvin Cook, I think there's the short yardage and a little more. That's, that's all I'm saying. But 
Maybe Zeke is the better choice. Who knows? Yeah, Either way. Garrett said, you know, at the end of the day, I do favor Zeke. There you go. So we got like five or six Zekers and like two or three Dalvin Cookers. Mm-hmm. Either way, I, I'm i good with either one. I'm not going to hate it. I'm just going to say we got to get a rookie and don't waste it on, on, on Jonathan Brooks in the second round. That would make me cry and make every, and no matter what movie make, it would make it horrible. <laughs> it would make the whole running back situation just fucking horrible. So yeah, guys, there you go. I, I figured we'd update. Again, this, this is like new news that came out. Last second here. Yeah. That's why we actually added to this in a longer stream. We're over an hour already because this shit's we haven't got to what they said yet. So let me get to what was said about somebody else on this team. Our greatest defensive player we have here, the man, Micah Parsons. Hmm. And what's the deal with Micah? Oh, I can't find Micah. Oh, there he is. Here's Micah. Micah Parsons. Today, baby, listen to this. Jory Epstein, who's not really covering the Cowboys, but actually did cover this story. An anonymous coach, they don't want to be named, all right, said this, quote, when the Cowboys are winning, Micah is a Hall of Famer. (laughs) When the Cowboys need him most, he's average, Mm. end quote. And a lot of Cowboy fans feel that same way. But this is an anonymous asshole. Trayvon Diggs is like, stupid coach. You know, like, like, you know, of course anonymous. But Micah Parsons right now is is catching fucking shots from, from anonymous coaches, talking shit about him. But what if the problem is not really Micah Parsons going away or, you know, supposing offenses, they double him, triple him, beat him up throughout a game. Maybe it's the defensive coordinator's job to fix that. Yeah, I was thinking. I mean, that's the first thing that came to mind was not it's Micah's fault. It was why is Micah getting worn down in, in, in the end of games or in a playoff game when they're triple teaming him? Well, the coach is not moving him around enough. The coach is not making it harder for the offense to try to, you know, nullify our best player. So... To me, it's maybe not positioning Micah Parsons to best succeed. And I don't mean linebacker. I mean moving him around the defensive line. A-gap, left pass rusher, right pass rusher, all over the place. Yeah, once in a while, linebacker. But get him more you know, versatile in there. Use that versatility. Dan Quinn kind of got lazy with that, I would say, the last couple complacent. of years. Yeah, complacent. complacent. That's good. So, again, what if a play is called by Dan Quinn? And, the player, and, and one of the players goes and does their own thing. Decides to rush when he is where and where and when he isn't supposed to rush. And then the, the play goes right back to the spot where he was supposed to be for a huge run or pass. Who's is that Micah's fault? Like another guy got you know what I'm saying like, like the, another guy's not doing their job, and how does that go back to Micah Parsons? That's what we've seen a lot. Yeah. When Micah can't get there because somebody else screwed up and made a allowed the quarterback to have a quick pass. To to not make have Micah be an issue. So look. And it doesn't, again, we know Micah sometimes goes, you know, he, he has his down times. He gets beat up in the game. But you can say this about the entire fucking defense. To say this about uh, when the Cowboys are winning, we have a lot of great players. But when we're losing, nobody shows up, it feels like. I mean, isn't so, that kind of how teams lose in the first no, I mean, place, though? That's how, you know. That's like saying, what, what, like, teams yeah. score less points than the other <laughs> team when they lose. You know, when the greatest pass rusher of all time, Lawrence Taylor, when he was nullified, he was never hardly ever stopped, like 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 Micah. But there were some games he disappeared, you know, whatever it may be. Why? Oh, game planning, he maybe had a bad game. You know, it happens to to a lot of people. So to me, like like when that means the rest of the defense was also not playing well for yeah. Lawrence Taylor and the Giants in that day. It's, it was just, Lawrence Taylor could have had a great game. They still lost by thirty. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all right, that's great he showed up, but he didn't play well, or he wasn't able to show up. And the whole defense also didn't show up. Is it because it's a chicken egg, you know, situation? Either way, guys, the Cowboys were opportunistic last year, not consistent. Which is, we got more consistent, but we still were not. The consistency needs to be more, and the opportun, opportun, opportunistic, oh. opportune and opportunistic plays that the Cowboys make, make, which is like pick sixes and picking up fumbles for touchdowns, and you know, balls get knocked up in the air, and we get picks. That's opportunistic. That's kind of lucky. We're there, right place, right time. Yeah. That stuff you just can't win and have a great defense for a whole we season. Saw it. We can't. Yeah. You can't consistently produce right. those types of results. So when it counts and when it matters and when you really yeah. need those types of things to happen, yeah, you, know, you can't just make them happen. Yeah. Well, you then, then end up in a bad situation. Better teams. Guess what they do. They don't have those opportunistic plays offered to the other de- to the yeah. defense. So better teams come along, they don't make as many mistakes, and now you don't get those opportunities anymore. So look, the point is we got to be consistent. I've been saying that for years, against the run and against the pass. And again, now it's an entirely different unit 
you know, I mean, not now, but I'm saying when we were playing with the lead last year, this defense was the best in the league. When we had any kind of deficit or any kind of issue, we were an average defense. It wasn't just on Micah. So as far as Micah is concerned, how is the best way? The only thing that he gets taken out of a game, he's not complete yet at defensive edge. But the only way, how do you take Micah out of the game? And I say this because people say they want him out linebacker blindly because they just right. they want to they just blindly want to say something different. But you know what? The way you take Micah out of a, out of a game is you run at Micah Parsons as an edge. What's going to happen if you run if you don't have a nose tackle and you run right at Micah as, as he's a linebacker? Same fucking thing. So people don't understand that they just want to. Put him at linebacker. That's where he's gonna be yeah, best. And we're actually making our, all of our problems. we're making the team worse. We're giving the opposing quarterback an offensive scheme and, and, and play calling to throw the ball on us, knowing they're not gonna have Micah pass rushing. It's just an obvious disadvantage if we put Micah too much at linebacker. I want to move him around all over the fucking place, mainly on the defensive line. I think that's the best way of doing it. And I know on third downs he'll be blitzing in the A gap. I know this, so that's because of Zimmer. So we'll see what happens. And that means A gap means over the center guards area they're inside he'll be standing over the center that's what's going to be happening now i don't have any quick quick thoughts on micah i'm going to move to Dak here well, and thomas garrett said it that's on dan quinn exactly i, I believe Steve it's more said, on quinn catching you know micah you know in regards to the micah thing she needs to shut her damn ass up catching strays from mr relevance like, <laughs> like who the hell is this person exactly. to even say that in regards to micah so Rolando well, Rodriguez saying you know it's going to be a 4-3 defense with zimmer and he will be better well, you know, we did hear, right? You know, yesterday, literally, from the coaches. Yeah, he, he was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, a 4-3 is going to be uh, different alignments up there. I'm hearing 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, a lot of different things going on, on on different downs, different lineups. So keep that in mind, guys. We're going to have a different lineup, a different formation when it comes to running downs and passing downs. We're going to have maybe a 4-3 a, a on some running downs or – and in a three form passing downs or reverse it and the other way around because you're going to bring your linebackers up and maybe you have guys floating all over the place even with a three four it just depends how the alignments are going to be but that's what the big word is we don't need a big old jonathan hankins because we're going to have different alignments to stop the run now what happens when they pass when we have a run alignment well we'll find out but when it comes to micah you know i think it's the way we use this defense the coordinator zimmer he has a long way to go still to build this thing up to something consistent on defense now Flip over to the offense because we got to talk about this. The headline news here on our title an hour into this, over an hour, an hour and 20 minutes into this. How far into this are we? We're into this for an hour and 20. I was on an hour and 19 minutes. I was off, off for a minute. Guys, this is the main news of, the, of this day. And it, it's not even really that huge or that big in the sense of like, we kind of know this was a possibility. But Dak Prescott today, guys, there is a mutual understanding. Mm hmm. Between the Cowboys and, you know, and, and the front office and Dak Prescott. A mutual understanding about his contract situation. So right now, there's been no offers from the Cowboys. Despite Dak being on his last year, a contract year. Now, I'm going to, Jerry Jones spoke. He's going to be speaking here in a minute. But we're going to talk about, about this Dak situation first. Owner Jerry Jones said today, quote, We are where we are. Locked and loaded. For this year, end quote. And there was no indication that a deal was on the way. So, boom. That's why you got a big question mark on my thumbnail over Dak wiping the tears from his eyes. Because I don't know what's the deal going forward here. Even though literally yesterday, Jerry Jones said, oh, yeah, we're going to give him the extension. We love him. He said this yesterday. Today, he's like, for now, we're good, locked and loaded. Per the team, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys have had extension discussions but no deal has been offered. No contract has been offered. And they also said it is, quote, not a pressurized situation for either side at this point, hmm. end quote. Meaning the Joneses, they're not rushing this. And Dak, he's cool oh, without rushing right either. Right, huh? He's going to get his money, whether it's Dallas or somewhere else. And Darren Posey. And he knows that. Much love. Darren Posey in the house. What's up? So what does this mean? Truly, guys, it's just Joneses doing the negotiations. That's what I think this means. For those Dak haters, don't get too happy. For those Dak lovers that are worried, don't get too nervous. Listen, the door remains open for a deal to get done this offseason, or it could be done anytime during the season. During the 2024 season, a deal can get done. 
Both sides are showing no urgency right now. Okay. Which tells me Dak is cool on betting on himself again. And the Joneses are willing to pay more money next year for Dak Prescott again if Dak plays like he did this year, all pro, pro, you know, MVP type season again. <laughs> That's a lot of agains. You see what I'm saying? I think the Cowboys, everyone's kind of waiting for the agains. Dak will make more money if he waits. He'll make more money with the Cowboys if he waits and has an MVP type year. And if he doesn't, he'll still make more money somewhere else if he waits and he has that average year. So Dak wins, Cowboys win ish. Yeah. Unless we he doesn't do well, we don't. Then we lose. But let me explain the loss. Let me because this is the thing, guys. The door remains open for a year. There's no urgency of him now. But honestly, if D- Dak wants to build, if he builds off of last season and plays like he does, like he did, and he like last year, and he plays like that this year, two years back to back in a row, he'll be making more money than what he would have been signing this off season. Just facts. Yeah, no Just doubt facts. about it. So I don't hear nobody bitching and crying about the teams you're playing. They're hard. They're easy. Wah, wah, wah. You know what? Then the Joneses should have paid him instead of waited to see what happened. That's their fault. Mm-hmm. So let me explain to you guys the craziness of this whole thing, though. This is the thing that kills me. Adam Scheffler, who again knows NFL and knows all these, doesn't know the cap situation. He said, guys, quote, the Cowboys are in a situation with Dak Prescott that's going to last, that's going into the last year of his deal. And if he leaves after this season, mm-hmm. the dead money cap charge is $95 million that they'd have to spread out. If he becomes a free agent next year, there will be no shortage of suitors. So he's saying Dak's going to get paid and the Cowboys are going to be left with $95 million of dead cap that has to be spread out. That doesn't sound right, but... False. That is wrong, guys. Facts are facts, and let me show you the contract. Boom, right there. Dak's contract. Bye-bye, Dak. Show me the Dak facts. There, the Dak facts. There you go. And it's simple as can be, guys. I mean, let me explain it. You can read it. You can look at it on your screens. But $95 million, if the Cowboys cut them now, that's the quote from Adam Scheffler. That is that is, that is, is only correct. He, he, said it, he, said, he said that it's $95 million if he if he doesn't play, if he plays out his contract. Mm-hmm. If next year, if he plays in 2024 and then ends up not being re-signed by the Cowboys in 2025, he's saying our cap will be $95 million to spread out. That is a lie. That is incorrect. I'll say incorrect. It's only $95 million if he's released today. Okay. If he's cut this year on his contract, we, we would owe $95 million. So Adam Scheffler getting the wrong information and putting it out. Now you hear Dak haters saying, Dak's going to cost us $95 million, oh, And they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. The Cowboys are not letting Dak go. That's just in, that, literally more than half the money we owe would happen if we cut Dak. We're not cutting Dak this season. He's not getting traded this season. There's a no trade clause. and he's not. Guys, that's never happened. So anybody who wanted that, I don't know, I guess cry. <laughs> it's not going to happen. What is going to happen is that Without being, if he was cut this year, it'd be ninety-five million dollars. He's not getting cut. If he plays out his contract, what's the deal? And we don't sign him, it would be a total of forty million, only forty million dollars of dead cap. And you got to remember, guys, if he leaves as a free agent next year, we're gonna get a third-round pick. Not that I really, you know, not, that's the best we're gonna get is a third-round comp pick, basically an early fourth-round pick. Yeah. But we're gonna get a comp pick from him if he leaves next year. And that'll be in 2026, I guess. 2024, yeah. And then we'll have $40 million left over. $40 million total dollars left over that we would have to stretch over four voided years. You see those last, you see those void, 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 right, guys? You see in 2025, void. 26, void. 27, 28, void. What does that mean? Those are just years he's not with the Cowboys and we're still paying the contract. Kind of like Zeke right now. We got $6 million voided Six million dollars of voided money on our we are paying on our cap this year. In twenty twenty five, we're gonna pay, you know, a certain amount. Twenty twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. If he plays out his contract and it's and and, and, he, and he goes to another team and we don't cut him, here's what the way it breaks down, guys. The value of the four remaining voided years in dead money. In twenty next year, we would be paying twenty six and a half million dollars to nobody. It'd be it'd be paid to the cap. Okay. But it's on DAC. It's Dak's money we have to spread out. Okay. So 
We t- out of those four years, so we'd have to pay twenty six point five million in dead cap next year, which would basically be the maybe half of what the cap is raised. So we still have twenty million dollars on top to use, even with the dead cap. It's not that much, is what I'm trying to say. Twenty six and a half million. Then in twenty twenty six, it'd be twelve million dollars. Twelve million. I mean, that's we got some twelve. We, this year we got twelve million dollars right. on a couple of different players, but this will be on DAC twelve million dollars in twenty twenty six. In twenty twenty seven, it would be one million dollars. In twenty twenty eight, it'd be one million dollars. <laughs> you wouldn't even feel those years hits, yeah. guys. So right now, if he plays his contract out and does not get a a a, a deal anymore, we're gonna pay twenty six and a half million dollars next year, not ninety five million dollars. Please. Please understand that that's a false statement from Adam Scheffler. We pay $26 million and a half of dead cap money next year with no DAC. Then in the next year, we pay $12 million with no DAC. And then the last two years, a million each, which you, even, you don't even feel in the cap. So really two years of dead cap. One year, it's really bad, I guess, $26.5 million, But not even as bad as it seems because it's a total of $40 million in dead cap money we have to pay. And you spread that out over four years, you don't even feel the hit. And that's why I say to you guys... That this is why the Cowboys can can make moves and take chances. Because you see all that bullshit about the Joneses worried about, oh my God, cap hell, cap... Bullshit. This is far from cap hell. This deal is a good deal for Dak and a good deal for the Cowboys, yeah. no matter what any Dak hater tells you. So, again, the Cowboys extend him. This money gets pushed down the line. We'll be, you know, 2029, 2030, 2030 will be... One million dollar hits, you know, it might go up to like thirty million and maybe fifteen million, you know, of dead money when those years come. So I'm just trying to say, like, it makes no sense if you want Dak, it makes no sense to wait. It makes no sense. Forty point five million dollars in dead money will hit the cap basically next league year if he's not extended, and that get yeah, that'll get reshuffled over those four years. That forty point five million gets reshuffled in a twenty six point five, twelve million, one million, and one million. You add it up. It's forty point five million over four years of dead cap money, which we can play around and put on the cap however we want. It's great. So, uh, before we get to the Jerry Jones kind of breakdown of things and the Mike McCarthy breakdown, I want to know what you think about this deal thing situation. I don't think I. Th- oh, Jerry the- Jones said, "This is cap hell. Don't trust the liars." <laughs> You're the liar, Jerry. Mike Agbana said, "Romo double dipped with his money, and Dak will too." And and, and it, that's irrelevant. So what? It's fine. If we move the money, we, we have to move the money forward. Got to take a little bit of a cap hit. But you know what? The, the, the cap was going up during Romo. $10 million a year. $8 million a year. You know what's going up now with Dak? $50 million, $40 million, $50 million, $60 million. Oh, Bar said it. We did that to Romo. We ended up paying him after he retired. Yes, but the but the, the rate of the cap increasing was minimal. It was consistent for 10 years. Now it's going up every year. 20 million, then 30 million, then 40 million, then 50 yeah, million. It keeps up, increasing. Yeah, it's basically going up at a rate that is almost equal to basically these contracts. The dead money. Yeah. So we can let these contracts eat the new money and still have our ra- our main base money left over. It's a simple, it's simple mathematics, guys. This is this is that. So we are we extend DAC. I'm cool with that. If we don't extend DAC, we can handle that because the deal was always manageable. All the DAC haters said, this is the worst deal in the world. Smack, smack. It's not. If you don't like DAC, that's one thing, but it's not a bad deal. Yeah. It's and, only and, a bad deal in comparison to the deal that we could have had had the Joneses acted sooner. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, baby. If they had got them a year or two earlier, it would have been 30 or $35 million instead of $40 million a year. Mm. I'm saying, and it's as simple as that. And the Cowboys screwed themselves, meaning the Cowboys, not us, not the star, not the coach, not the players, the front office. That means Jerry and Stephen Jones. That's all. So, any other last comments on this? We're moving because this, this to me, it, it, people are freaking out. I think Dak is staying. He's getting extended, and this movie get this money gets moved back a little bit more when the money is even going to be less important. Like this money is going to be even, you know, it's going to be worth. This money is worth less. Like the, the the cap hits we're paying will actually really be percentage wise a lot less when we actually have to pay the piper. It's funny because Jerry Jones said, "See, even inflation increasing the cap." <laughs> there you go. So, but yeah, no, let's keep it rolling. So. Now that we're done with the, with the DAC discussion, on that side of things, there's still other DAC stuff we got to talk about per what was asked of Jerry Jones today. Baby, Jerry Jones spoke. Let me put Jerry up on here. Jerry Jones spoke at the owner's meeting again, the NFL meeting, 
And he started off with, basically, he was asked about um, the legal situation involving Dak Prescott. All right? Involving this woman who requested $100 million from Dak when uh, coming forward with an alleged sexual assault accusation from 2017. Now, we know, excuse me, we know Dak is suing her for extortion. Mm Mm-hmm. What did Jerry Jones think about the situation with Dak Prescott? Jerry said, we are very knowledgeable of it, of anybody. I can say you work through the legal aspects of it, so very aware of it. Not uncomfortable with it in any way. Hate it that the issue has to have any negative aspect to it, all for everybody concerned. I can say that we're just very aware of the details and very comfortable. Yeah. So again, according to Jerry Jones... Not affecting these contract talks, so supposedly. Now, contract talks. Cowboys, of course, as we said, we heard about the, the Dak stuff come up. Dak, you know, Jerry kind of kind of said a sentence I said he said earlier about Dak. And, you know, we're good right now, locked and loaded with the team right now. That was also a very non-answer that he gave there. A lot of nothing. Oh, yeah, no. A just aware of, aware of the details. Yeah, no, he's just he's saying that, you know, it doesn't affect their, their mindset on things. Who knows? But he's saying it doesn't affect their mindset. But I'm talking about the, the extension deal, which uh, that's what we're talking about. Is it going to affect the extension? Are we not going to give an extension now because of this? You know, does this affect this? And as of right now, I mean, he had, that was the question he answered. It had no change. But we know the Cowboys, even though we heard about them not giving an extension yet and there's nothing in, imminent, there's no ruling out of the extension done this year or into the season. And that's from a team official uh, earlier today. So... As has been the case, guys, there is no guarantee that a deal is going to come in this season, in 2024, for Dak Prescott. So, is there some, you know, some people believe there's a benefit with a, with, with a, uh, an extension if the Cowboys wait to 2025. What did Jerry Jones say about that? He said he is willing to everything he can to help us win. And so, we are where we are. We have our contract locked and loaded for this year. We can see as we move along how we are thinking we're inclusive of everybody, including Dak. We'll see what we can do. I don't have anything to report today. All right, there you go. So, again, just kind of staying on the outskirts of everything when it comes to Dak Prescott and, you know, his his deal. So, that's kind of that's kind of the, the wrap of, of Dak's deal, the fact that we're not having a deal going with him. Then you heard, you know, I gave you the numbers and the facts. If we don't sign him... We'll get a third round comp, and you see the, the $40 million got to be spread over four years of dead void, dead cap, voided voided years on his contract, dead money on the salary cap. So that's the deal if it goes that way. If we extend them, all that money gets, we'll, we'll get, get hit for like $30 million and $35 million for the next two, three years on the cap. And then we got to pay the dead money again, you know, uh, three years, four years into his dead years, which will be paid eventually one time when the salary cap will be over $350 million at that point. So with this new cap situation, and the explanation of Dak with his situation with the, with the legal uh, attorneys and the sexual harassment or assault situation, it's not affecting this, this, uh, these negotiations. And, of course, the salary cap going up and the salary cap overall going up, but our cap being kept very low by Jerry Jones. Mm. Jerry said he saw no surprises with the cap limitations. Baby, I know you got the full, full breakdown on this. So what else did Jerry say today, starting with cap issues? I knew that it was going to be challenging. It always is. The nature of the cap has to be looked at over a several year period. Because we have in place players that will be paid in future years, we have a good handle on that. What you do in cap management is you borrow money from available dollars in the future to use it in current years. Correct. That's what we just discussed. Most clubs, we included, have a lot of money that we've already paid the players, but you have to count under the cap for future years. It shouldn't come as a surprise. You have to have it well thought out. It's got a very bright line. Now, this process was started years ago by Jerry Jones. He said this. And money has begun to get pushed out, you know, and, and letting guys go and not re-signing guys. And he knew that would become a reality. That tells me it's a rebuild. If you think of that way, it's a rebuild. What else did he say? The timing of them as well as the amount of them are all a part of a strategy that we were thinking about two years ago. Hmm. In fact... It involves a player that was here two years ago. There's no surprises here because it's competitive. Is that Zeke? Who are you talking about? I, I mean, <laughs> who was here? That's what I'm saying. No, because the implication anymore, yeah. is that someone who was here two years ago that no longer is, 
that Tyron was Smith? a cap decision. <laughs> no, but two years true, ago. True, 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 true. You're right. You know, I don't even yeah. know if Amari fits in that bill. But well, anyway, keeping well, it rolling. You well, know. yeah, you know, he, he didn't just stop there when it comes to contracts. We talked about Dak a little bit, but he also talked about this guy, C.D. Lamb. What did Jerry say about C.D. Lamb and his contract? He's out there, and he's more valuable than anybody <coughs> else. Hmm. But that valuable, to have to give up four or five players to have him, you have to get that reconciled. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a lot quicker and easier said than done. Whoever has CD, and I hope it's us, they're going to use him. You have to. You just have to get that kind of mileage out of him. What has he shown us? That he's capable of carrying that load. We've got to have focus. It almost seems like CD didn't do enough for Jerry in a way. I don't know. Look, all, all I know is that... Yeah, I know like, that's not like, how he meant it. I know, but, but he's saying we need... Like, like he's balancing CD Lamb being with us. Is this negotiations bullshit again? Because he's balancing CD Lamb and five players. Which five players are we talking about? Sheldrick Redwine? <laughs> and five and four more of him? I'm just saying, like, he's making no sense, this motherfucker. Like, you sign your best guys most of the time because they're fucking good and you use them all the time. That's what we've been doing with CD. We pushed the Mari out for that reason. We pushed it. And now you're going to what? You're dilly dallying on, on extending CD Lamb? You're fucking stupid. And that's the problem with. And that's the, he's saying, see, that's the problem. No. See, that's the problem. Mm. Jerry, you're the problem. I do see. And, yeah, him the and. problem. And Steven, of course. Let's not forget this, because Steven's running the fucking contract shit. Jerry Jones also spoke about the confidence he has in the young talent that has stepped up <laughs> in place of the departed starters. He said that today. And I'm going to bring this back up a little later when Mike McCarthy speaks because he has to follow the, the marching orders of the Joneses. Jerry Jones said, quote, all of that, I feel good about it. Meaning the, the second year, third year guys having to step up. I feel as good as any time I've ever gone into an offseason as I can remember. My confidence is still high despite the limited moves in free agency. And again, the, again, he also kind of paraphrasing here, confidence is high, limited cap availability, and the fact that a lot of starters are leaving the building, multiple starters at multiple positions, he still feels very confident. Now, <laughs> from one guy who's, you know, blowing smoke right up our asshole, like whew, right up and in there, uh, you're going to go to the guy who is the final part of our show here. So drop your last comments and I guess some love if you guys wanted to. Um, but your last thoughts and all that stuff. But we're going to finish up with Mike McCarthy, who kind of spoke after. I don't know if it was after or before. Either way, it don't matter to me. He spoke around the same time as Jerry Jones did when they're having the coaches sit around and speak. So what did uh, Mike McCarthy have to say, baby, when it came to... This was actually not today. This was actually yesterday. And he was in the NFL Live studios. And he was there with, of course, mistake man Adam Schefter. Mm -hmm. And he sat with McCarthy to discuss the Cowboys... Strange, puzzling free agency or lack of free agency and their free agent strategy. We have this short up in the video form. You can watch it, but maybe I want you to just tell everybody what he said, word for word, a quote from Mike McCarthy when he was asked, "You know what's going on with free agency? What are the what are the what are, the, what are you guys doing here?" So, what was he? What did he say about free agency? I'm a big believer in the second and third year jump. You know, we have some young players, some guys coming off of IR young players that we're excited about. We are definitely improving, you know. We just aren't part of the free agent market right now. <laughs> no doubt. There's no, no question about that. <laughs> so, of course, you know, Schefter kind of followed that up by asking, so is that what Cowboy fans can hang their hat on, that we're coming back and getting better? Yeah. Basically implying, like, we gotta no wait free for agency? The, we got to wait for these injured guys, these, you know, these, 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 Guys haven't even been on the field again on there and trying to have to step up. That's what, yeah, that's, what we're, that's what we're counting on that shit. Yeah, McCarthy's response to that was, quote, Well, I think that and also there's a lot left. You'll probably have a market right before the draft, post-draft. <laughs> then you have the June 1st market. And obviously we will have another draft class. So I have great confidence in our roster. Guys, <sighs> Jerry Jones and his all-in, all-in bullshit, which we know it's bullshit. Nothing has changed. The formula is worse, maybe. Maybe it's changed, maybe it's gotten worse. The Cowboys are operating the same way that they operate pretty much every offseason, I'd say, except for last one, which was, to me, I, in my mind, I still think last year was all in. This year is rebuild. I'm feeling like that right now. So McCarthy, again, sat down, met with reporters for the NFC Coaches Breakfast this morning at the NFL's annual meeting in Orlando. Mike McCarthy then spoke 
you know, on what, again, going into his contract year now, his final year, he spoke about how he and his coaching staff are all entering this 2024 season, all on their, all of them, on their final year of their contracts. What did McCarthy say? We're all given an opportunity to coach 2024 Dallas Cowboys. Nobody is more engaged than we are. The financial component, everyone is different in that realm, regardless of where you are on your contract. I don't see it as more pressure. I think it's just the reality of our industry. I'm extremely blessed to be here. I'm very much engaged where my feet are and the opportunities I've had personally. I'm very blessed. I never lose sight of that. That's always been my big picture approach. Now when I look at the younger coaches, yeah, I worry more about them than I do myself because I know where I am in my career. But the reality of it is if you don't take the same approach every year, you're really looking at it the wrong way. Well, you know, he knows, it sounds to me a, a dead man walking a little bit here for him in this upcoming season. And very, coaches very on their resigned contracts. to his yeah, fate, yeah. But, which I can understand because, I mean, how long and how hard can you yeah. fight against an immovable object? I don't think he... I don't think McCarthy realized it was going to be Kellen Moore, you know, running running the show, you know, Jerry Jones running the show through Kellen Moore, and then it's going to be now everything put on him. You know what I'm saying? In this way, where he's not going to really have as much opportunity to get the team better. Dak's not going to have opportunity to get guys back on the team to help the holes. It's just a colossal fail right, right now. And he's not going to say that. So he said the best he could as far as what's going on, you know, where they're going forward, future, draft, post-June 1st, free agents. I mean, so look. I don't think McCarthy has a choice. But he said, basically, he's not worried about the losses that we've we had in free agency mm-hmm. with the non-gains. He said it's part of the business. What did he say? He was at the owner's meeting at his breakfast. What yeah. else? What did he say about this and the fact that, uh, you know, our losses and, and not no gains in free agency or limited gains? We've got a draft class coming in. <laughs> we'll continue to be involved in the free agency. But the reality of our business is the economics. As your players grows and your va- and your values grow, how you keep them all together varies. That's a whole other competition that goes on from year to year. If you're progressing and the value of your players are increasing, the economics of your football team is never going to be the same from year to year. I get what the numbers say, but the reality of it is, from my experience, you've got to really develop from within. I will say one thing. He at least is used to that from the Packers. The Packers made him develop from within Jones is love developing from within. So I guess he's used to it. He's accepting it. He's as calm as a Hindu cow, Jerry but he sold Mike McCarthy, <laughs> a bill of lies too. I'm telling you. So look on, they both sell each other lies really. But again, he's almost resigned to shit right now in, in the sense that this is going to happen and that's the way it's going to be. So it's about now the, the draft players, th- you know, building from the inside you know, we got to have guys like Jalen Tolbert, Sam Williams, uh, Mozzie Smith, and others step up. Rico Dowdle, you know, Brock Hoffman, DJ Bass. I, I can keep going. So what else did McCarthy say about this team? And now we're kind of keeping it together. I don't know. It's buoyed by the team we've got. Buoyed by the fact that we have young players that have to step up. Was it Baba buoyed? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> They will step up. Some won't as much as we wanted, and some will do more. All of that I feel good about. I feel as good as any time I've gone into an offseason as I can remember. We very well will have players that didn't play much in the last year that will step up that are under contract. By virtue of the moves that we're making right now, it doesn't create a negative in my mind. Just because you don't have a player doesn't mean you're not going to win the games. Tyler Smith will take another step. We'll keep him at guard right now and see how it unfolds. I thought we took a big step if you look at the makeup of our offensive line last year where our younger players were backups and they got to play too. I want to say one real quick thing about that. I mean, I mean, I don't know what you think about what his comment was there about about um, you know him staying there. But to me, he, he made clear as of now, Tyler Smith is staying at guard. He said, though, we'll see how that goes. All that will change on how the draft shakes out yeah so just want to say that part of things you but know. as of now the Cowboys are going into yeah. it as we're going to try to draft the left tackle that's yeah. that's my assumption yeah. based on the language yeah, just, we're hearing but he also now. but he's saying let's see what the draft because they go you know they switch it up they're open yeah they're they're, so there's still a chance that can happen 
Um, he said, let's fill out the room. Let's see what we got, what we look at. But he's pleased with uh, – overall, what you just said, basically he's pleased with the offensive line room and the development. What does that tell you? Because that tells me TJ Bass – and Brock Hoffman are your starters for now. And, yeah, we'll draft one guy. The other guy will be the starter. So, you know, he's – I like Especially that Especially when you pair it with the previous comments <laughs> I agree. of, uh-huh. you know, well, you know, you got to basically handle the economics. <laughs> you got all the – like every team will have that too, you know, the good teams. So, again, he wants to – he said, quote, we'd like to continue to adding to that, meaning the offensive line room. Tyler Smith's going to stay at guard for now, according to McCarthy. But we do know that can easily change in a blink of an eye. So – um, you know, any any thoughts on Tyler Smith, maybe in that discussion? I mean, that's kind of something that we we know it's going to probably go fluctuate not, the not, entire season. Honestly, not that surprising. It's going to fluctuate, I think, the whole season. I'm going to be real with you about that. So, um, anyways, the other parts of this offensive line we got to upgrade. No Tyler, no Tyron Smith, no Tyler Biotish, right? So the offensive line is under uh, under extreme focus right now. What do you say about fixing this offensive line, whatever is left of it? Really, the process of upgrading and improving the depth of the O-line really happened last year. We added some really good young guys that we feel good about. I mean, you can put Brock in the same category. He's been here. No (laughs) one was as close to Tyler Biadish as he was. So I think that's a natural step for him to step in there and we'll continue to grow. (sighs) But we do want to continue to add talent and depth to that room. Can I say something there? That tells me the Cowboys are going to go tackle. Leave, they're gonna go tackle, leave Tyler Smith at guard, uh, uh, and then use Brock Hoffman at center. Mm. That's what I'm feeling from that comment, reading between the lines. You know, it wasn't just offense that he was talking about, yeah, he was talking about defense. He's talking about Sam Williams. Mm. McCarthy said this, so we already heard a guy taking a step forward is Tyler Smith, a guy taking a step forward is you know, uh, uh Brock Hoffman. Of course, sounds like the tackle is going to be the offensive lineman uh, in the rookie first round pick. So you, we got some step ups there on the offensive line. I'm not crazy about that, about the center situation, but we'll see. Now, we you know we still got the receiver spot there. You know, it's going to be Jalen Tolbert. He'll obviously have to step up. We'll be talking a little bit about the running back stuff in a minute here. We talked about you know Dalvin Cook and Zeke possibly being added with Rico Donald, but Rico's going to have to step up on defense. Sam Williams got to step up in a big way. Because he is going to have to play that Dorrance Armstrong slash Dante Fowler role. That's just the way it's going to be. So Mike McCarthy said this about Sam Williams also taking another step forward in his third up, upcoming third season with the Cowboys. He said, quote, Sam Williams, yes, must step up. Absolutely. With Dorrance Armstrong moving on and the opportunity now in front of him, Sam is probably in the front of the line or near the front of the line of one of the players that really needs to step up. He's going to be given more opportunities. You know what's important about that? Jerry Jones literally said yesterday that we had too many defensive linemen and there wasn't enough opportunities for all of them. We know who, we know who he's talking about, right? Jerry Jones is talking about Sam Williams. Because literally, you know, McCarthy just said, he's going to get opportunities. He's going to move, you know, we're going to give him more opportunities. He's going to get all about opportunities. So that's what Jerry Jones said yesterday. It's almost word for word. that Jerry Jones is talking about Sam Williams is the reason why we let Dorrance Armstrong and Sam and and, uh, and and Fowler go, which I'm cool with, but Sam Williams got to play with a better brain in his head. He he plays great on the field, but he's got to play smarter. So that's you know we know that's a quick flick to the defense. Look back to the offense. I did mention Rico Dowdle. What are we gonna do at the running back spot? Rico Dowdle is the only guy left right now as our starter. We lost Tony Pollard in free agency to Tennessee. It's clear the Cowboys have to do something still at running back. I know we have some lesser guys behind Rico, and Rico's, you know, third stringer basically yeah. still. So that's our best guy. So getting Rico Dowdle again was big. We heard Sam, you know, Stephen Jones. Oh, it's such a big signing we made. And you know, McCarthy also believes this is a big move. But basically, we're still going to need to add another body, probably in the form of a veteran, but also a rookie as well, or one or the other, or maybe both. I don't know. But it will be necessary to still continue to add in the running back room. What did McCarthy say about the situation there? I think we definitely want to add to the running back room. We're not done with that room by no means, whether it's a veteran, whether it's a draft pick. Signing Rico back was important. He's definitely someone that was part of the 1-2 rotation last year, so we feel good about him. But we've got some young guys in here that look to make a jump. You look at Hunter, Deuce, even Malik. 
I'm expecting them to take a big jump and compete for playing time. Already he's telling you guys. He's literally telling us right there. These are the guys that have to make the jump to fix the lack of free agency moves they're doing. We have to have Rico Dowdle take a jump to like almost a starter kind of guy. You got to have guys like Hunter Lipke, undrafted fullback. Deuce Vaughn maybe shouldn't have been drafted tiny running back. And Malik Davis, a practice squad running back. These are the guys that got to step up and fill in. And, and are we, We're not going to be better. We're worse. At least at this point, at least right now with the way they're explaining it, I'm expecting the worst. What else was said, baby? So we will be better as an offensive staff this year. Hmm. We need to take a second-year jump as a coaching staff on the offensive side. I think Brian is doing a great job leading the charge there. I'm always calling the game, whether it's in the shower or driving to work. That's Brian Schottenheimer, by the way. He's, he's mentioning it. I know, but yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, I I know, know, McCarthy I know. took a page out of Jerry's book. <laughs> think about shit in the shower. Anyway, Showering, um, driving, he's thinking about you know calling the game and the play calls. Anyway, adding in their quote, I think you have to approach it that way because so many of these decisions are really just your approach and mindsets are developed in the off season. Hmm. Well, you know, obviously, I, I understand what he's saying. He's saying that we're going to be better in offense because the coaching is I better and the players are not better. He's offense, but he's said better. that every single year. <laughs> exactly. So this is just the usual McCarthy stuff. It's not his fault. I don't even blame him. He has no choice. It's the Joneses that I keep in his, you know, tongue in a jar in a way, right? Now, we made a... One fucking move. One fucking move we made. You look at our free agent tracker. The one move we made from another team outside of our own guys is linebacker Eric Kendricks. And McCarthy did speak about Eric Kendricks and his impact on this team was going to be. And I, I agree. We've The only thing we've upgraded on, we kept the, the, the uh, special teams room the same, which is great. And we improved on the linebacker spot with Eric Kendricks right there. What did he say about Eric Kendricks and his impact? I'll say this, just having the chance to meet with Eric. Competed against him a lot when he was in Minnesota, yep. but just the confidence that he has in Mike Zimmer speaks for itself. Just to use his words, it's the best coach he's ever played for as far as from the defensive perspective, the in-game adjustments. Hmm. He is excited to be back in the system and excited about his opportunity in Dallas. Just the fact that, you know, this is a huge pickup, mainly because Eric Kendrick's right there, and McCarthy just said it, He's gonna. He knows the wording, the verbiage, the everything about this defense with Zimmer. He knows it like the back of his hand. The best guy you could have in there is basically an, an in-game player coach, which is Eric Kendricks. So that that impact, that part is real. That part, I'm sure that Zimmer's excited about, and and McCarthy knows it is an upgrade. Uh, but what about other guys on defense that got to step up? He spoke about them too, like Mozzie mm-hmm. Smith. Adding in their quote, I'm looking for Mozzie to take that step. No bones about it. Hmm. Now, if you just look at the dynamics of the room, and obviously we'll continue to add to that room, but he's going to have a lot more opportunity in front of him. So, by the way, uh, quick surprise, if you didn't know, Mozzie Smith, shoulder surgery. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the details of that more after you're speaking here. Yeah, but, you know, McCarthy just kind of, you know, hit us with that out of nowhere, but he did add in there. He's going through a rehab phase right now. I just look for him. He's definitely one of the guys that needs to take that big second-year jump, and I think he'll do that. I think now he'll have a better plan, and we'll need to help him with that plan to be at the proper weight and maintain it. So, again, as yep. your players, oh, oh, sorry. No, as no, your, no. I just want to make sure we remember that he lost a lot of poundage. Now he, you know, it looks like he sounds like he's going to gain it back healthily, you know, in a better way. Okay. Um, not just in a rushed way or just overweight, you know, just overload him. But it just sounds like he's going to manage his weight better than last year where he lost 35 pounds for some unknown reason. Uh, anyway, they added yeah. in there, as your players grow and their values grow, how you keep them all together varies. Uh, that's a whole other competition that goes on from year to year. The biggest improvement we'll have as a football team is the development of our young players. If your roster is built the right way, the development of the young guys that may have played 15 plays a game may increase to 45 or 50. Hmm. Ultimately... Maybe you want to have the 70 to 75 play a game player that to me would be in the line of a starter. I've never approached it as having 11 starters on any side of the ball. You can really take all of our second, third, and some of our fourth year players and put them in that category. Ooh, that scares the fuck out of me because now all these guys are ready and a lot of these guys are going to fail. When, when, when two or three of them do well, but then, you know, five or six of them fail, how's that team going to look? How's his offensive scheme going to look for McCarthy? How's the defensive scheme going to look for Zimmer? How's that going to look? It's going to be bad. 
Look, I just want to go over something here real quick because there's two guys we're going to finish with here. McCarthy. And that's, I think McCarthy, that's all he said, right? I mean, yeah. That's the end of McCarthy's kind of comments there. But more importantly was what he left us with as we, you know, as we get say goodnight tonight. I want to give you the update on the injury situation for two of our rookies from last year. And I, and I hate having to bring this up, baby. I hate it. I hate it so much. But you know, last year's picks. Mm-hmm. Mozzie Smith, 26th pick overall. And, number, and pick number 58, tight end Luke Schoonmaker. Don't forget, pick number 90, he missed the whole season. Yeah. Linebacker DeMar ran overshone. That's day one and day two, all three picks. Now officially rehabbing. Yes. yes. So we heard about yeah. Mozzie, but you're telling we me know about, well, well, we know about well. We know Overshone is well, already Mozzie. he's rehabbing back. And, and, and like I but, said, we just found out about Mozzie. Right. So, but that's the thing though, Mozzie. I got a little more Mozzie because <laughs> Mozzie Smith, guys, and a little more detail on this, and it's as important. This is one of those guys that it's a first round. He's got to have that Jalen Tolbert rebound kind of year that re, that he had for the Cowboys on the receiver side. Mozzie Smith has to come up big because they don't sound like they're gonna get any help for him, and if they do, it would be. Probably after June for I mean after the the draft, and it'll probably be a you know it'll be a, a known veteran you know interior guy. It's going to help Mozzie, but Mozzie's going to be taking forty to fifty snaps this year, and that's trouble if he don't get right. McCarthy said that that defensive nose tackle Mozzie Smith, and also Luke Schoonmaker, yes, Schoonmaker, this guy number eighty six tight end. They both have had the same surgery, guys. The shoulder surgery. Both, I think they had them right at the start of the season, right at the end of the season. But now, because they both had shoulder surgeries, it's going to put them through rehab up until the start of training camp. Oh, my God. So, like I said, our first round pick, Mozzie Smith, coming off an injury in 2024 with very little, OT, with no OTAs, and just maybe ready for training camp. Our second round pick in 2023. Play like shit. Had injuries last year. Coming off injury this year. That shoulder injury like Mozzie. In 2024. And don't forget our third round pick. Also the ACL. The Marine Overshone. Coming off of injury. Missing the whole 2023 season. This is not good. No bueno. McCarthy said Mozzie Smith had this offseason shoulder surgery. And quote. He's going to have a lot more opportunities in 2024. He also said that Mozzie, quote, lost some weight last season and he'll have a better plan and we'll help him with that plan to keep him at the envisioned weight. That's a little bit of good news there. That means he's going back up to 320, 330 to be that 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 guy in the middle that we need that we drafted him in the first round for. He's not there to be Osa. He's there to be a, a better Hankins. And we didn't see that last year. But the issue with the shoulder surgery, because he did it right when the season ended, he's going to be out off the field for four to six months. So that was wow. right. That was in January. That's going to take him to July, August, training camp at the latest. So he's going to miss mini camp, which is big. He's going to miss the offseason workout, which is big. He's going to miss OTAs, which is big, but he'll be ready for training camp. I guess that's good. I'm just saying, like, it's still a big loss across the board here for the Cowboys yeah, and no this situation. Too, you know, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Nope. And then don't, don't, let's not talk about this guy. We could have had Osiris Torrance. We wouldn't be talking about an offensive lineman right now. We talk about a center, maybe. Or t- one of, we would talk about one offensive lineman right now if we had Osiris Torrance instead of this guy. Tight end Luke Schoonmaker. Both, by the way, both Mozzie and Schoonmaker, Michigan. And the Cowboys are loving Michigan. They sent the whole team out there at the pro day. So get ready for more Michigan coming, maybe. But Schoonmaker underwent shoulder surgery last week. So he did his a little sooner. Why did it happen sooner? He got injured in training. This motherfucker gets injured with a foot plantar fasciitis that, that nobody knew about, supposedly. And then he gets injured training. And I know this shit happens. But my fucking like God. Like season training? Yeah, like training just like to get to keep himself in, in shape. Schoonmaker's shoulder surgery was more recent than Mozzie. So Mozzie will be ready sooner. But again, according to everybody, according to Mike McCarthy, according to McCarthy, he said, quote, it's still all systems go for Luke Schoonmaker to make it for training camp. Remember last year, he barely got into training camp in Cali. 
you know, and then he True. got in Frisco, and then he got a little bit. Or where was it? Where did they go? They go in, in Oxnard, and then when he got back to Frisco, he had a little bit more time out there, but he didn't really start off with much until the middle of the year. He didn't do much last year. So again, this is unfortunate Our for both rookies. I mean, right? uh, I mean, Mozzie Smith, our first round pick. Injured. Yeah, Second round pick injured. Third round pick no injured. Idea. It, it is a little bit astounding. I don't know why we are so fragile all know. of a sudden again. Yeah, right? we, we used to be, recent years, we were not going to wood. We were pretty pretty sturdy there. Now we're getting fragile. Maybe the players are pussy. I don't know. <laughs> but either way, I got to mention this at least for both these guys. Mozzie Smith and Luke Schoonmaker did play in all 18 games last year for the Cowboys. You got to give them credit because they both did battle through injury and stayed on the field. Like Mozzie st- got surgery because he played with injury throughout the the, re- the the end part of the season. Schoonmaker got hurt, you know. Now he got hurt, but he got he was injured and in playing through pain with his plantar fasciitis last year. So you give him credit for that. I agree. But these guys, Mozzie needs the off-season workouts program, and he's not getting that now because he's injured Mm -hmm. and he's rehabbing. And he needs the OTAs. He needs the stuff he missed last year. He's not getting any of that. He's missing it again this year. And then you got someone like Lou Schoomaker who missed all of it last year. He's going to miss all of it this year too. And he came back jogging for like a day or two in in training camp. We'll see if he even gets in the field this time around because his injury just happened last week. So – not good news across the board. Again, these are two former Michigan standouts. And guess what they have to do, baby? According to Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy, and everybody else, they got to make a big step forward. They got to make a big jump. Well, that's right. Both of these I guys, both, both these guys got to make a big jump. And both these guys are fucking injured and not going to make any jumps until July and August. <laughs> so what is really going, guys, is this a clusterfuck or what? You know, they're hoping. And I'm talking about not even on McCarthy. It's about the Joneses, Stephen and Jerry. They are hoping that these two hurt guys. McCarthy said it because he has to. He has nothing else to say. What else can he say? He's got to. They got to hope that both of these guys who are banged up and not playing played poorly last year and banged up now, along along with Demarion Overshone, who's got to make a another big step forward too, coming off not playing a, a down for us in the regular season. All these three top picks from last year. Our guys that have to take a big step forward. Wonderful. What what is going on? This is not. Yeah, maybe they sh- could, they should, they they have to, but they won't. They all won't. So that you just you're just playing with fire there, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, the fucking clown show. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, back to the so, same. Yeah, uh, Simon says. By the way, shout out to the man, Simon. This is love. I'm really glad to see you here. He hey, said, you know, don't forget about that injury draft, you know, Fahoko. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my God. Them. So, yeah, yeah. again. That's, we have two that's, real bad draft classes in recent years out of like five. That's why I hate to say it, but it does instinctually make me cringe back a little bit at the thought of picking up a player who's banged up in the second round again. Yeah. Because Jonathan never Brooks. Out for us. Jonathan Brooks, Texas running back, a torn ACL. We'll be ready, he'll be ready for training camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard that before. It has never worked out for us. So was Gallup, wasn't he? Oh, no, he wasn't ready at all for two years. Well, what about uh, Terrence Steele? His worst, uh, other than his rookie year, his worst year last year with that torn ACL. He didn't have that power. Was not getting off the line as well. Was not doing the duo blocking with Zach Martin as as consistently as he did in the past. What happened? Oh, yeah, the fucking ACL. We just paid him money, paid Gallup money. Now we cut him. I'm just saying this is stupid front office management. And then we're going to go draft Robert Brook, Robert Jones. Or, I'm sorry, I keep talking about Robert Jones, a former <laughs> Cowboy. Jonathan, we're going to go Jonathan Brooks and get him from Texas because he's a Texas guy and we like him. On a running back in the second round, a torn ACL. Are you fucking kidding me? This team wants to lose. This is I said this the other day. Last year was the fucking all in. This year is the rebuild. No soft rebuild. Rebuild. Plain and simple. And that's what they wanted to look like. The clown show is getting their circus. That's all I gotta say about that. Mm. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. What is again, well, that's what the shout outs combined with the comments. Let's Simon do it. says, says throw some clown makeup on Wilma Clay's ass too. <laughs> well, you know, Wilma Clay well, I got... M- Mr. OCF and I have different <laughs> ideas. On how much blame Will yeah. McClay should you, get. You give so. McClay much more clown makeup than I do. I, I, I give him a I, little bit. I think McClay, even though he made he made a mistake with Mozzie last year. That was his pick. I'm holding him to that. I, I, oh. I, don't, I don't know if it was developed. What a change of a tune. I don't know if it was developed properly, though. I don't think it was developed properly. I don't know who told me he needed to lose weight, but I know it wasn't Will McClay. I can tell you that. So here's the thing about McClay. He's got a battle 
Who is he? Who is he always fighting to try to 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 get something, get blood out of, squeeze blood out of a turnip? Yeah, yeah. He has to do that with these clowns. They're not giving him. Hey, we got eleven million. Use it. They're saying use one million dollars. Will McClay got to do what he got to do with that? I mean, that you're tying both his hands behind his back and making him do a puzzle with his feet. What the fuck? And he's still putting together some pieces. That to me is why I can't get mad at Will McClay. I can't even yell at McCarthy as much as I want to because the clowns are running the town. They're the ones doing it. And that's just the facts. And it, yeah, Jerry Jones is the, the spearhead, you know, the, the, he, he spearheaded the thing from the beginning. He was the, you know, the he, he's the, bla- the trailblazer. Stephen Jones is the pussy son of the trailblazer. And he's doing worse. And he's the one in control now. We're fucked. Mm-hmm. Will McClay, I feel bad. He's taking that money. He's doing what he can. There's only so much that Mr. Will McClay can do. And he made some mistakes, so fuck him for that. But he's the, the guy who's made the least mistakes on this fucking team in his front office because he has, he has nothing to work with and he makes something out of nothing. That's why I still give him credit. Maybe more than I should, but I, I can't help it. I got to give him credit when you're working with the clown show. Hey, got to do it. It is what it is. It's all good. But with that no, I mean, said, we're gonna do yeah, the, let me keep putting up some comments here in the chat. To the shout outs, yeah. Up, yeah. The final shout outs with the comment. With a comment here and there. Pioneer said, Jalen gets Saquon Barkley. Dak gets the deuce. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It gets a lot, a lot of that, and Rico is our starter. Wow. Thomas Garrett said, Stephen Leopard, face Jones. <laughs> and Dan Quinn told Mozzie to lose weight. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it was Dan Quinn. We don't know who it came from, but if it's Dan Quinn, I would be sh- I would be kind of surprised. I'd be shocked if it came from Will McClay, but I would feel... I would I would feel like, you know, like expected to hear that coming from the front office. No push. offense. Does it matter Not at this really. point? The we point know it is, didn't work. <laughs> collectively as a coaching decision, whether it was Dan Quinn or whether it was somebody else, well, the, the front point office, is yeah. someone told Mozzie to lose weight. Someone thought it was a good idea. Someone let him keep on going that way. You know, I obviously we're trying to course correct now. Yeah. So uh, let me keep doing the, the shout out slash chat comments here right pine i think i read that one right <laughs> mike aldana said the man behind the clown show i think i read that one too throw another you guys yeah we did talk about dax agent uh earlier yes uh, yes long story short or, don't yeah. lie yeah uh he lied and he got your oath he, he lied he fucked around and found out simon says this season gonna be a train wreck and i'm afraid Choo-choo. to say it's a it's a train wreck and a rebuild a rebuild is usually equals a train wreck so you know if we win 10 games it's like we won 15 games because <laughs> <laughs> We shouldn't. We shouldn't. Not with what's left over in this team. Yeah. Uh, take it easy, Lee's side. William Bernie said, all signs point towards tanking this season. Yeah. Yeah. Just... yeah. It feels like it. I mean, dead man walking. Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott, whatever you think about them, then I get be given a, then I'm being given a, a shot. And it started with Jerry Jones saying, all in. His old Lost in Translation said, Scooney D will be fine. From Taco to the Big Mac, we'll see him game five. <laughs> Jesus. We got Taco failure. We got Mozzie failure right now. Right, yeah. I, I still want to give him benefit of doubt. And Schoonmaker seems like a bigger failure, although he's a second-round pick. He done nothing. So we'll see. We got to see a lot from these two motherfuckers this year. Long Stroke Johnson said, Mozzie <laughs> Smith gives me Taco Charlton, Tristan Hill vibes. And everyone says that because, you know, you, you remember them. You know, of course, unfortunately, Tristan Hill from UCF, my alma mater. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, with Michigan, when we drafted Mozzie, everyone's like, Taco. I'm like, let's wait. And then I'm eating tacos now. So, again, the thing is, I, I still want to wait one more year to see where Mozzie's going to be at. But, yeah, it's scary right now. He's hanging on by a thread, in my opinion. we got to see a lot of improvement from him. So... Let me see. Uh, Thomas Garris also said, I heard Mozzie's back at 300 plus. Yep, yep, yep. He's gaining weight. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Uh, well, he's allowed to gain weight now. Frame Rippers, much love. Yeah, I think you might have missed a Dak talk if you're hopping in here at this point. Here we Dak got Delusional, that. take it easy. <laughs> Jarrah Jones, you have a great night as well. Dustin Roberts, much love, saying, I believe in this year and I do believe in players stepping up. I'm going to come back after June 1st and say, I told you so when we end up with a team to be excited about. I, I, you know, I, Dustin, I hope you're right. I hope so. I think that we have to realize the reality of the situation. And the reality is, no matter what happens, guys, we will get some guys. We'll get a Dalvin Cook. And we'll get, a, a you know, a, some other fucking nose tackle that's going to be a workable guy in the, you know, uh, before training camp. And we'll add this guy and that guy. And we'll have enough to feel, you know, be enough smoke pumped up our ass by that point that we'll feel good about our team. But the reality is, you know, everyone thinks they can win the Super Bowl week one you know everyone has this is zero and zero so yeah you we're all we're cowboy fans the fanatic comes out right you're gonna say let's get this but the reality we know it it's 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 gonna be a, a long 
ride up this mountain and I don't know if we get to the top of it. And so we're going to see how this thing plays out on this another year of Jerry Jones doing what he's been doing for basically 27, 28 years and coming up with nothing. So why would it be different now? We're doing less. Why would it be better? That's the way I look at it. So we'll, I, got, I got to have proof. I just can't say it, Dust, Dustin. I just cannot just say it and hope it. <laughs> I got to see it. Burn far much love. By the way, kind of hitting back at that one random Jerry comment about CeeDee Lamb saying, CeeDee's one of the most consistent players we've got. We better resign. Damn him. right. Talk about consistency. <laughs> Right. Keep the consistent guys. Ryan Files, take it easy. Much love. Let me see. Rolando Rodriguez, you have a great night as well. Yeah. Darren Posey. Let me see. Do, 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 do. C Bass. Much love to you, of course. Uh, yeah. Choctaw Montana 808 representing. Take it easy. Have a great night. MB. Mike Aldana. All of you guys, again, appreciate you all. You guys know where to find us, right? Mike Cowboys family on all social media. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. We'll see you guys around here and maybe uh, later tonight yeah, after uh, dark. Yeah, after dark style. Guys, uh, much love to, to, to SCO971 and After Dark, McLove and After Dark, and Marissa After Dark dropping a little love through there. And then the Q Man, and the only guy dropping the love, but that's it's, it's always more than enough. Justin Quarles, the Q Man dropping that. <laughs> Sheldrick Redwine, $20 holler. Yeah, I will never remember that. No more uh, Tony Pollard at 20 it's Sheldrick Redwine, practice squad cornerback. So uh, that's the twenty dollars holler by Justin Quarles. Appreciate you. Much love to the sponsor of the week, Monk Lovin, who is also the crown holder, the Cash App King. Much love to Monk Lovin on that side of things as well. And Mr. A. Lavelle holding it down, still with sixty-seven points on that stream, boss. Skeptical fans, staying skeptical as our gifting membership champion. He's also the gifting leader, so he might go back to back. Like our 90s Cowboys. But I don't know about back to back on the Cash App King and the Swanson of the Week from McLovin. He's second on the board, but first is Harley Dad. On the After Dark sessions, both those guys, they're repping it. And Harley Dad's in first place on both Cash App and the overall board. We will see what happens the rest of this week. Thank you all for joining us here for another one. Yes, I will try to send a little, little eyeballs over when it comes to after dark and if you want to know where we're at or i will be tonight playing some hip-hop a little rap a little chill a little chill stream well you can join me over there guys because uh you know so we, we do any, everything but football there here we do only football so make sure you join us there if you see the eyeballs and if you're ready subs- make sure you go over there <laughs> subscribe they're only one time viewings and you can't rewind them so keep that in mind as well if you want to ever go if you stay up late have a night job or have insomnia like I have. I have two out of the three. Basically a night-ish job and insomnia. So you got me in the right spot for the After Dark sessions. We'll see you there as well. I think I think After Dark, just yeah. peek, peek through, the, through the window there. So After Dark will be live in about half an hour or so. Guys, thank you again for joining us. Baby, let them know why we do this each and every night here on My Cowboys Family. It's that navy blue, that silver too, and that star over everything win lose or draw <laughs> might be a lot of losing this year good bad or ugly maybe very ugly this year right simon says he's a good night much love to simon says he's the king here on cowboy on the cowboy youtube side of things but on this channel no matter what happens even if it's the word even for owens 17 we will still rep that star for everything here in my cowboys family seven almost seven years on July 1st of being on YouTube and here my Cowboys family never forget the number one thing here now and forever as always go Cowboys you see my shirt you know what I'm going to say let's get that six and beyond thank you all for dropping your knowledge in the chat all night long all, all night. night you know it appreciate you guys truly the back and forth is great your thoughts your comments on our team can't replicate it also of course humbled and much love to those that dropped the love from from above whether it's justin quarles on tonight's show or the after dark sessions or any other night thank you guys for the love drop this week we will see you back here as we clock out and drop out tonight relock and reload for another show probably thursday i'm not sure we're gonna make it tomorrow we'll see but we're probably gonna miss a day this week you never know that's why you got that notification bell on right to all videos you know if we go live tomorrow you'll catch us here if not we'll see you thursday either way guys thank you for joining us much love to all and baby before we can drop out of the drop out for the night after two hours and 15 minutes tell everybody what we gotta do before we drop out of here for the evening we gotta drop
the beat. And that beat has been dropped. Thank you all for repping it here, rocking with here with the FCF family as we broke down a full day, a real full day of news, info, and updates. A little wrap up right here on another MCF Cowboys chat. Yeah, hell yeah, guys. You know how we do. Thank you all again for the love, the support, and for all the news and info we discussed. Tyler Smith, you know, guard situation, staying there for now, McCarthy said. But Mozzie, Sam Williams behind him. You got, you know, Micah getting called out when we're not playing good on defense. I mean, a lot of things going on. You got Jerry Jones speaking today as well, and Dak. The news on Dak and that non-contract yet. Both sides are cool with that. Both, you know, both sides think it's a, it's a win for them. We'll see what happens. We'll keep tabs on that. You know, we do that here each and every day. Pretty much every day. Right here in MCF where it's always, always about that navy blue, that silver too, and that star over everything. Never forget the number one thing right here in my Cowboys family. Much love to all you guys in the house. Even the haters appreciate you all. Don't forget to hit that like button for the analytics. Hit that subscribe button to keep growing the channel, the family. And, of course, hit that notification bell. Move it to all videos. So you know we're going live almost on the nightly. And, of course, don't forget, there's also that social media side, X Twitter, at My Cowboys Family. We post when we go live there as well as in Discord. Join that as well. And on that note, look over the description. All the information in there. Appreciate you all. See you after dark. Peace. Stay safe. And never, ever forget, Yo, Cowboys! Monk on the beat.